谢大家今天参加这个 Clean House Meet Up， 这个也是，呃，我们在这个一关在去年去年 A 十峰会上的红蓝大赛里面 ，Clean House 的这个小组成员获得了整个一关竞赛的第一名，所以后来我们也看到了 Clean House 这个新的一个引擎，呃，联系到了呃整个在俄罗斯的这个 Clean House 的整个团队，今天也是邀请这个 Clean House 的。单人马来去给大家讲解一下这个 Clean House 的整个的一个运营机制和一些 Roadmap。然后，如果大家有什么问题，我们大概我们会有这么几个 Session 哈，每一个 Session 结束大概有十分钟的提问时间。呃，我先把整个的议程大概说一下。那其实有些人还没有在群里哈，就如果需要进这个 Clean House User Group 的，可以待会线下找到我们的戴立东，戴立东在哪？找到戴立东，然后他会把你们拉到这个群里面。如果有一些问人想去更了解咱们这个 Clean House 的一些这个动态和一些文章，可以到三 w 点 Clean House 点 com 点 cn， 然后那是我们自己做的一个呃论坛，然后上面有很多的一些这个各位特特别叫上午进行会议的一些 Clean House 大咖们来去给大家解答的一些问题。<笑>那么我今天的整个日程大概有七部分，第一个呢是会请。Alexi m i l a d o v 去介绍一下这个呃 Clean House 的整个的一个情况。那么第二个呢是是也是比较也是 Alexander 会给我们介绍一下这个真的去怎么样去把一些原来的数据库怎么迁移到我们的 Clean House 里面来去。那第三部第三个演讲呢是这个也是呃 Alexi 会给我们介绍一下这个 Clean House 的一些内里边内部的这个 internal 的。index 怎么来做，包括它的这个 partition 怎么来做。那么这是到第四部分的时候，其实我们就会用会我们中国的一个主要的新浪的，这也是 Clubhouse 的高手啊，这个高给我们介绍一下新浪怎么来去用的 Clubhouse， 给大家做一个借鉴。第五部分呢，会由这个杨旭军给大家讲一讲这个 Clubhouse 是怎么样从零到一来去把搭建一个 Clubhouse 集群。那么第六部分还会请我们正好是从上海这个 Splunk 团队的中国研发中心的同事来讲讲 Splunk 来怎么来去看这个 Clean House 的一些使用的情况。那么最后还会最后我还会让我们的这个 Alex 去讲讲最近的这个 Clean House 的这个呃也即将发布的一些 feature， 比如说像我们在讨论的这个 delete feature 和 update feature， 这些是整个七部分内容非常多哈，然后。每个部分大概四十分钟，所以大家如果提问的时候，可以那个紧凑一些，我们大概只有十分钟的提问时间，然后那个争取今天下午非常丰满的这个整个 Clean House 的一个过程，大家都能能弄好，好吧？就是整个给我做起来。那这个下面我就废话不多说，直接请我们的这个 Alexa 去，这个他这个 part 是做我们的 introduction 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 and overview of Clean House and for Alexei. Hi everyone. I'm Alexei, a developer of ClickHouse. Uh, today is 12th ClickHouse meetup, but this is the first ClickHouse meetup in China. And the title of my talk is Evolution of data structure in Yandex Metrica, or how we came up to development of ClickHouse. First, about me. Uh, I work in Yandex uh, about <coughs> for 10 years right now, and I started uh, with development of a service uh, named Yandex Metrica. First, what is Yandex? Uh, Yandex is the largest, one of the largest internet companies in Europe, and uh, the most uh, popular search engine in Russia. But in short, it's like Russian Baidu. More Russian Google, or maybe Russian uh, China, I don't know. And about Yandex Metrica. Yandex Metrica is a service for web analytics, like Google Analytics, or like uh, Baidu Analytics. And um, in Russia, Yandex Metrica is the most popular, popular web analytics service. Uh, and if you 
account, mm. and all fun of Russia, it will be the same. Just after Google Analytics. Maybe Baidu Analytics is even more popular than Yandex Metrica. Uh, maybe it's just not uh, counted correctly. And uh, each day, uh, uh, we have events uh, from the internet about uh, page views, clicks, conversions, uh, about 25 uh, billion events uh, each day. And the main challenge is to generate a report for our users, for website owners, about uh, their traffic. Here is what Yandex Metrica looks like. You see a beautiful report, and the main point is uh, that we want to make all reports infinitely customizable. So the user uh, have a report, and they uh, should have the possibility to drill down this report to apply custom segmentation. Uh, to drill down up to individual events, individual users. Uh, let's review our historical solution first. How we uh, try different technologies and how we eventually start the development of ClickHubs. Uh, first, the question, uh, how to store data for web analytics uh, to generate reports. Uh, processing the data itself is not a, a big problem. Uh, the problem is how to store it in what data structure to allow efficient generation of uh, reports and simultaneously to allow ingestion of incoming data in real time. And about 10 years ago, uh, we started with MySQL. Uh, I think many companies go the same way and start with MySQL. Uh, we had about just uh, 50 predefined reports. And we create uh, a table for uh, each of reports. When we have incoming data, we collect this data in batches and run insert on duplicate key update uh, query. That look pretty simple, but the problem that is uh, just don't work without specific mm. tricks, specific customizations. Why this uh, don't work? Uh, the main concern is data locality. How uh, exactly data is located in file system and on disk? Uh, if we have rotational drives, uh, each uh, tick is at, at least uh, 10 milliseconds. And uh, let's think uh, how uh, the data will be stored on disk if we write it to MySQL, to my IASM uh, tables. When we insert the data to the tables, uh, if we don't do any uh, updates, deletes, the inserted data will be uh, stored in almost in <coughs> an order of insertion. So in an order of time. But when we uh, have to generate a report, we usually generate a report for one customer, for one website. And data on disk will be ordered by time but randomly spread if we query a long period for single website. For example, year for uh, report for one year. And uh, for example, if we have to read uh, 100,000 of rows uh, from HDD, and the da data is not, uh, is spread across uh, the HDD, we have to do approximately uh, that number of uh, disk cycles. And if each disk is 
this is this circle was 1 millisecond, it's less than real, it will be 100 seconds for each rapper. And this is uh, ridiculously slow. So we have to apply some tricks to maintain data locality. Uh, the tricks are custom partition. For example, uh, we can um, split our data uh, to many tables. For example, one table for website. And we will think that uh, our data will be located uh, better. Uh, it's uh, still not going to work uh, because uh, it uh, insertion, injection uh, speed uh, will be suffer too much. So we have to organize uh, data uh, by generation. For example, one generation for fresh data, and uh, the fresh data is ordered almost by time, and second generation for archive data, and we'll, we'll reorder data by offline, and then uh, query the data with uh, complicated query with many union select, union all different select from different tables. So very inconvenient solution. Uh, at year 2011, uh, we had about uh, half of trillion records in my IS ATM table. But then we invented another data structure and everything was converted and deleted. You may think that this data structure is click house, but it is not. Uh, we have developed a specific data structure for incremental data aggregation. It is called uh, metrage. Uh, in met metrage, metrage is uh, used uh, something like uh, log structure Nord 3. By the way, uh, I would like to ask you a question. How many of you uh, know uh, what is log structure knowledge tree? Please raise your hand. No uh, one? Please speak slowly. <laughs> I think that uh, tells you a bit little. Yeah, you, you can just uh, uh, ask your question. I, I will translate that faster. How many of you uh, are already know what is log structure knowledge tree? Log L is M. Log structure. Oh, uh, yeah. I also look at your turn into the SM track. Please raise your hands. <coughs>
specialize the data structure and we can write a custom uh, aggregation code, custom data, implement custom data structure for aggregation. For example, we can uh, use uh, hyperlock lock to calculate number of uh, distant users on the website. By the way, I have a question. How many of you are familiar with hyperlock lock algorithm? <laughs> How many of you are familiar with hyperlock lock algorithm? Hyperlock lock, That's fine. Uh, so Metrash uh, was working uh, fine, uh, no uh, issues with performance, but there was uh, one limitation, and we were not satisfied, satisfied with Metrash. The limitation is that it allows to generate only predefined reports. Reports with predefined key, uh, predefined keys. There was no possibility to slice and dice to drill down uh, to apply some segments to the reports because uh, it is intended to store aggregated data. When data is aggregated, it's not possible to unaggregate. Uh, and if we want customizable report, the only possible solution is to store data in non-aggregated format. And for that purpose, we have to develop a completely different data structure. You may think that now it will be click house, but it is still uh, not click house. It was different things. We work, uh, we like. Uh, many different specialized data structures. It was the report builder. In report builder, uh, we store data in column oriented format in just one table, session table. And when we uh, want to generate a report, we just quickly scan the table filter, apply some aggregations, and uh, that's done. Uh, the report builder uh, was working fine, but it again was very limited solution because uh, it uh, support just one hard-coded uh, single table. And, uh, but uh, it allows, allows us to come up with idea that we really need to develop some, or use some good, uh, good enough column oriented database management system. Uh, but first, why we really need column oriented system for uh, web analytics? I will explain it uh, in uh, some pretty looking anim animated picture. Uh, this is a picture of how traditional row-oriented system works. For example, we need to, uh, we have a table with user events. Uh, for example, page views on our website. And for each event, we have many attributes. Date and time, user identifier, uh, user agent, uh, region, IP address, and so on and we want to generate a record. For example, a record by region, by city. For that purpose, we, we need just uh, two columns, or three columns, a region, user identifier, date and time, and that's it. But our table have uh, hundreds of columns, hundreds of different attributes. And, uh, Query efficiency, 
query processing speed is depend on how we store data on disk. In traditional row oriented systems, the data is stored row by row. First, all attributes from one row, then all attributes from another row. And when we need to just fetch few columns, we have to read all unneeded attributes. Let's compare how to uh, column oriented system work. As you see, it's much faster uh, because data uh, is stored uh, by columns. First, all data from one column or, or data, all data from another column. When we have to fetch few columns, we just read only required, uh, only requested data. So we have uh, a hypothesis. If we have good uh, enough uh, column oriented database management system, probably uh, we can generate all required records uh, from it. And we uh, started uh, testing different, uh, different existing solutions. It was year 2010, and there was, for example, MonoDB, InfiniDB, InfoBright. We started testing and found that all of them are not suitable for our purpose. Some of them was uh, not scale, scale out. So it uh, was not possible to implement one uh, implement cluster solution. Some of them just uh, was not performant enough. Uh, some of them was not open source or was uh, commercial with very high cost of license. And we started development of our uh, own solution. It is ClickHouse. We started development in year 2010. In after two years, it was uh, used in production, uh, and after another two years, uh, it allowed us to completely rewrite our system, Yandex Metrica, uh, to use a uh, new data structure based on ClickHouse. And uh, we made it. In uh, Yandex Metrica, uh, new version of Yandex Metrica, all records became infinitely customizable. User just uh, click a button and apply some segment to the data and the report is generated on the fly, directly from non-aggregated data. So in Yandex Metrica, we have a cluster on ClickHouse. It is uh, 500 servers, and we store 25 trillions of uh, rows in that cluster. Uh, when we run a query, the peak uh, query processing speed is about uh, 2 terabytes per second. Uh, please uh, don't be afraid uh, of that number. Because if you want to use Freehouse on, uh, if you want to use Freehouse, you can use it on your own uh, single server or even virtual machine or even on your laptop if you use Linux. By the way, on Mac, it's also uh, run. So, briefly, what ClickHouse is? ClickHouse is a real, real common oriented database management system. ClickHouse is distributed uh, and linearly scalable. So, uh, you can extend your cluster and more servers as you need. The house is uh, fault tolerant and fault tolerant in uh, terms of data centers. You can have uh, your replicas in different geographical locations. For example, half of your replicas in Beijing, another in Shanghai, <coughs> and if uh, data center in Beijing became unavailable, 
the queries continue to run. Uh, the house is a real time system, and I can call it informally double real time. What do I mean double real time? Because you can simultaneously ingest new data in real time. In fact, in many batches, about <coughs> one batch per second. And uh, in, in the same time, you can do real time queries for reporting. Uh, Clickhouse implements uh, SQL dialect, not standard SQL, but some dialect. <laughs> By the way, uh, there is, uh, I personally don't like um, no SQL databases, so I just implement SQL dialect in Clickhouse. Uh, it's quite limited, uh, but it also supports many extensions for uh, web analytical purposes. For example, array data structures, nested data structures, domain specific functions for web analytic purposes. For example, functions to work with URL, IP addresses. Clickhouse uh, supports approximate query execution. Uh, if you ha have some real uh, big data sets, and want to just get uh, approximate result in uh, some seconds time. And then we decided to make Clickhouse open source. Because initially Clickhouse was used just by Yandex. And it was not very, uh, not very funny for us. We just want more fun. And for that purpose, we made it open source. Because we are happy with the house, and we want you to be happy too. Uh, and we specifically decided to use very unrestricted license, Apache license. It's more convenient than GPL, you know. And currently, uh, we have uh, more than 100 of companies using Clickhouse. Uh, about half of them are in Russia, another in Europe, USA, but also in China. And uh, if we just look at Yandex Metrica report for website, our website, uh, in what countries Clickhouse is the most popular? First is Russia. But what is the second? The second is China. <laughs> not USA, not Europe, but China. It's quite a surprise because uh, I know more examples of Clickhouse usage in Europe, in USA, but in China not, not so much. So if you want to use Clickhouse, when you should use Clickhouse, when you should not. You should use Clickhouse if you have well-structured, clean, immutable events. For example, click stream data, telecommunication data, data of advertisement networks, sensor data, <coughs> monitoring data, Big corner, uh, real time bidding, online games, and so on. But Clickhouse is a specialized system. It's not general purpose solution. So there are many cases when Clickhouse is not appropriate to use. For example, transactional databases, OLTP. OLTP is not for Clickhouse because currently Clickhouse even have no support for updates. Clickhouse uh, is not appropriate as key value databases. Uh, because Clickhouse is mostly uh, suitable for not so large number of heavy queries, but not for big number of small queries. 
as you have in uh, key value data basis. And the count is not for blob store or document oriented archetype data. The count is for structured data. If you want to use the count, you should prepare your, da your data to as uh, much as possible small uh, columns. Integer columns, string columns, doesn't matter. And of course we have benchmarks. <coughs> but I think benchmarks is not interesting, especially official benchmarks. You can go to our website and you see that the house is faster, 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 no surprise. Instead, uh, I'm more like not a benchmark, right, but evidence. I just type the house in my favorite cloud system and uh, look at random Code on ran random internet pages. And for example, this is the uh, code from our support chat. <laughs> and I think it's much better than any benchmark. Benchmark is just uh, some uh, graphs that are difficult to understand. And this is much more simple, it's better. And I like it. So, what is the reason for the house <coughs> performance? Why the house is fast? Uh, first of all, it's main motivation for the house, Yandex Metrica. Yandex Metrica have to work. I work uh, for Yandex Metrica, and if we uh, can make the house some faster, we just get the possibility to provide our users more customizable reports or more uh, complex reports. Uh, but more serious, <coughs> why the house is fast? Uh, three points. First, uh, different algorithmic optimization. Uh, for example, mm. locality of data on disk for fast range queries. You define mm, some uh, key for your tables, and you can uh, execute uh, queries by uh, by ranges, for example, by websites uh, with not so so much data to read uh, from the disk. Another example is uh, specialized data structures. For example, we have about uh, four different data structures just to calculate count distinct. By the way, may I ask you a question? How to calculate count distinct? What data structure you should use? How to calculate count distinct? How to calculate count distinct? Yeah. What data structures you should use? Data structures.
four different data structures and you can choose. What do you need? Uh, if you need approximate result, for example, you can uh, use specific function that uh, just uh, executes faster than uh, exact result. If you uh, need exact result, we use uh, a hash tables. And that hash tables is specifically optimized for uh, different variants of count distinct. For example, count distinct by string keys, count distinct by integer uh, keys of different, uh, different dimensions. Another point is many low-level optimizations implemented in Treehouse. For example, vectorized query execution. Do you know what is vectorized query execution? Vector. Anyone? Okay. Cassandra, no, no. In Cassandra, there is no, no vectorized query execution. Uh, Cassandra is also, uh, uh, someone can call Cassandra colon-oriented system, but it's not uh, exactly colon-oriented system, it's just uh, wide uh, colon system for unstructured data. Okay, another point is uh, high level of specializations. For example, if you want to uh, execute a query with group by, we have 17 different implementations of just group by, 17 different specialized data structures. And if you want to start uh, to use ClickHouse, how to connect to ClickHouse? What interfaces uh, do you use? ClickHouse uh, have simple HTTP interface like REST. Uh, also we have uh, quite uh, convenient, my favorite, by the way, command line uh, client, ClickHouse client. I especially like the progress bar that it shows. Also we have JDBC, yeah. JDBC uh, and ODBC interfaces. And we have community drivers for, from almost every program language, even even Rust, if you like. There, is, there are also integrations with data visualization tools. We have integration with Grafana, uh, Redash. Also, we have an interface called Tabix, uh, developed specifically for ClickHouse. And we have community. Website clickhouse.yandex. Yandex is top level domain, by the way. Looks great. Uh, we have our source code, I invite everyone to read. And now we have also China user group. Also we have meetups. Most of them was in Russia. In Moscow, St. Petersburg, Novosibirsk, Ekaterinburg, Minsk, and even Nizhny Novgorod. Uh, does anyone have any idea where it is? Okay. No idea. No idea. <laughs> but this is the city in Russia. Okay. And now in Beijing. By the way, if you have uh, had any difficulties understanding my presentation, understanding my tricky English accent, you can just read the article from this guy. Uh, uh, he, he cannot come here. Uh, I just invited this guy. Only Russian. Yes. Uh, okay. He, he cannot come here. Uh, this is almost uh, my presentation translated to Chinese. So you. If you have any difficulties, you can just read it. So, thank you. Just two questions? Yeah. Or maybe two questions. Two questions. Two questions. Two questions. Two questions.
这个 session， 要没有的话可以放后面那个 session 再问，有吗？我也有问。啊，你问。啊，我我我想，呃，我想问一下，就是 Play House 的底层引擎跟 LSM 速它有有哪些改进？So just now you said like, uh, what is the improvement uh, uh, when you compare Crickhouse and the, and the traditional LSM engine? Like what are the improvements always? Uh, Crickhouse combines LSM and uh, Colm oriented data storage. And also Crickhouse uh, have uh, efficient query, uh, query processing engine for uh, structured data. So the main improvement of uh, is uh, of combination of uh, different uh, solutions, uh, specifically for analytical data processing. So you start her, you go to the engine. Yeah, going to. So this is the question, three questions. Just now, who is the first one? I'll give it to him first. Okay, I'll give it to him. Only two questions. Then the next one, the next one, he will say what? Ah, the next one, 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 the next one. The question is uh, why call it quick house? <laughs> uh, click house is a combination of two words click stream and data warehouse. I think only two questions for, for your session. And you will, uh, you'll have another session, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think, and, uh, uh, yeah. This. Next one is our session. Alexander Zadik will give us a practical guide from migration to ClickHouse. And today, many of you are asking Wi-Fi number, because Wi-Fi is doing the show, so you can use your own data. Okay, please, Alexander. Welcome. Uh, welcome, Alexander. just told you the story from the ClickHouse developer perspective, so how they came to ClickHouse and how it works. I will tell you the story from the ClickHouse user perspective, how to use ClickHouse more efficiently and how to implement your own ClickHouse solution. Uh, who am I? Uh, I'm from Moscow, from Moscow State University, and software engineer since 20, 20 years already. And I'm working in develop, uh, development of distributed systems for uh, 15 years, uh, mostly focusing on high performance analytics. And uh, holding the position of director of engineering in Live Street, this is an American company. And uh, after we implemented ClickHouse in Live Street, uh, I co founded. Alternity, a ClickHouse service provider company, the Yandex partner. And uh, we'll talk uh, a little bit why you want to migrate to ClickHouse and uh, how to do that. Uh, the first question is very, very easy to answer. Uh, Sorry, guys. 
还是叫那个叫那个什么？嗯，那个这个这个这个为什么没有？正好有有在场。OK OK OK OK。So now it works. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat that. So. Queries run longer and, and longer, and this is typical for for big data. And if your data grows so fast that, that you can't handle it, the system doesn't scale very good. And if your solution cost grows faster than your business, so you're adding more servers, but you're not earning more money from that. So this is the indicator that you need to rethink of your solution. Uh, something is not optimal. And this is why many companies uh, come to Click House. Uh, I will tell you an example of Lifesteel. This is a tech company since 2006. It's working in performance advertisement and uh, RTD. So it's uh, uh, collecting data and analyzing campaign landing page creative data and optimizing it. It uh, has ad exchange, so it needs to report and analyze publisher and advertiser performance. It's integrated to RTD in, uh, as RTD publisher and as RTD advertiser. In RCD, it has to do programmatic bidding, so it's prediction algorithm and so on, and it has its own DP uh, subsystem as well. So it's a lot of data, uh, and actually the data, uh, it grows like that. So in 2006, it was a little bit higher than zero, then it started to grow. Basically, for several years, it grows three times every year, uh, the, the data size. After, after, after 2000, 12 or 13, it, it kind of stabilized, but it still uh, grew up very, very, very fast. Uh, so in two years ago, we had requirements uh, that uh, looked like this. Uh, about 10 billion uh, events per day. Events are mostly big requests on FTB networks. And every event is characterized by 500 dimensions. Uh, users had to run reports on three months of detailed data. and. Uh, uh, for unlimited amount of time on aggregated data. Uh, low data and query latency were requirements as well, and system need to, needed to be high, highly available without any downtime, down because if uh, the system is down, and uh, uh, then we cannot, cannot efficiently serve ads and starting to lose money. And the amount of data uh, that we needed to process and save uh, was about uh, two petabytes, so it's 10 billion events, 2K uh, per event, and for 90 to 120 days, there's this two petabytes of data. Quite impressive. And other 10 years, we actually tried different solutions in different stages of the company. We started from MySQL, then we switched to Oracle, we tried different flavors of MySQL, DocuDB, Sharp Query, we waited InfiniDB, MoniaDB, InfoBright, Paraxel, which uh, uh, was later acquired by Amazon to, to become Red Chef, uh, Green Plum, uh, Snowflake DP, and we used Vertica for, for several years. Vertica is the great database. Very good, but very expensive. <laughs> and then ClickHouse popped up, and we started the project to switch to ClickHouse. But, bef but be before we did, and before you go uh, as well, if with your migration project, you need to, uh, to check some boxes. First, you need to confirm your use case, that your use case works for ClickHouse. This is what Alexei told. Uh, so it's time series, uh, data, or something like that. It's not a OTP database, not a keyword store. Second, you need to check benchmarks, and to, to check benchmarks and uh, uh, confirm that this benchmark actually applied to your use case and to your data. There could be many very good benchmarks uh, run by other companies, by Yandex, by uh, Altinity, by Percona, or whoever mm -hmm. else. But these benchmarks uh, use someone else's data. With your data, it could be different. So I recommend you to run benchmarks using your data to understand how it works for you. Uh, next, uh, and this is what we are very, very concerned about, uh, look at ClickHouse limitations, not features. 
there, there are a lot of limitations in Big House that are not very feasible when you just start using it, but they can be, ser be serious problems using limitations. I will talk about them uh, later today and show how we deal with them. And then make a proof of concept. I believe that everyone who is uh, going to Big House is doing some proof of concept of pilot, of pilot project. And this is must to do uh, before you decide. So uh, looking back in 2016, ClickHouse was very limited database. It didn't have transactions. It doesn't have transactions now. It didn't have constraints. It doesn't have constraints now. If you came from a traditional database, uh, from some FDBMS like, like Oracle, it's very, very uh, surprising. It doesn't guarantee consistency, so if you insert data, sometimes you can get uh, the data without, you, you, can, you can get the different result sometimes. There are no updates and deletes, uh, they are in roadmap for 2018. Uh, there were no nulls, there are nulls now. Uh, no milliseconds for the time, if you have very detailed data, you have to keep milliseconds separate in a separate column. There are no implicit type conversions that could be sometimes inconvenient. <coughs> SQL not standard, especially syntax related to drugs. And while it's not a problem for developers who, who are good to write any possible SQL, any possible programming language, it's not very good for existing tools uh, that know standard SQL language and does not recall SQL. Uh, there were no partitioning by any clone, only date partitioning. By parti partitioning has been recently added. And uh, there are no enterprise separation tools like uh, cluster management tools, etc. And this is still still an issue. Um, in 2016 and even at the beginning of 2017, there were no visibility of what's going on with ClickHouse. There were no real roadmap, no change log. Now there is an excellent change logs and even there is somewhat, somewhat roadmap available. And there, there were no commercial support, so uh, our CTO, he, he asked who will be supporting that, and there were no answer, and that's why we established our team. So usually reaction of SQL developer uh, that uh, looks at this list of limitations is something like, you guys are crazy? Is, is it a database? But it's really the database, it's a cool database. <laughs> so we, during migration, uh, we uh, deal with the following challenges and the same challenges will, uh, will appear in, in any project. First, it's very important to design efficient schema because uh, the schema, uh, it affects anything about uh, your data how good your data is compressed, how good it's stored, how fast it can be queried. And uh, in order to do that, you need to use ClickHouse best and work around limitations. Uh, next, uh, you need to design reliable data ingestion. Uh, and then think about sharding a replication uh, and also uh, pay a lot of attention to client interfaces. And we'll talk about that now. So basic, uh, basic task uh, that is uh, implemented on ClickHouse is multi-dimensional analysis. So it's a query that looks like, like this. So you select several dimensions mm -hmm. and calculate several metrics, usually sums or, some, or something, uh, subject to where conditions and having conditions. And it's often modeled like a n-dimensional uh, with the, the range filter, which applies, which is where conditions, and it, okay, it's, it's a just a picture. Uh, and typically in data warehouse world, it's modeled like a star schema with one table uh, at the center and several tables uh, at, at the uh, rows of the star, uh, which uh, represent definitions of the something contained in the fact table. And there are two uh, 
And the, and the approach to, there are two approaches to star schema design, denormalized and normalized. And in the normalized approach, uh, everything is stored in one table. So it's a single table with no joints. Values are very simple. But uh, on the negative side, the data is immutable. It cannot be changed because the table is usually very huge. Uh, the storage is sub-efficient and the queries are sub-efficient as well because of the size. The normalized approach, uh, this is usually be usually better. Uh, it includes multiple tables, so you have uh, one table which have references, key references to smaller dimension tables. It's more complex to query because you have to do joins, uh, but uh, data in dimension tables can be easily changed because these tables are usually small. And the storage is more efficient and queries are more efficient as well. But the problem is uh, that uh, the traditional approach to normalize schema with joints doesn't work very well in ClickHouse. It doesn't work very well because in ClickHouse uh, the joints are only with one, one level and if there are multiple joints required then uh, you need to create subselects. And while it's possible, it's not very efficient uh, when executed in distributed environment. And uh, also the joint syntax is kind of uh, strange uh, however, it's in the roadmap for this year to so have the better support. I'm not sure about RNC SQL, but better support. And also, dimension tables in, in ClickHouse are not updatable as well. So nothing is updatable very easily. Uh, but ClickHouse has a repla replacement uh, for the joints, and it's called dictionaries. It's very, very powerful technology for ClickHouse. Uh, and I will explain why. Here's an example. Uh, the first query, it uses join to dim geo in order to get country, country name. And the second query, it uses dictionary code. Uh, these are produced absolutely identical results, but uh, looks very different. So in the second case, you don't need any join, but you have a function call, and it gets string, which retrieves uh, the country name from the dictionary. And uh, so dictionary is just uh, a service that you can use by function. What is good about that, that the data in dictionary can be uh, retrieved from multiple sources. It could be table and external database, for example, MySQL database, or Postgres database, or any ODBC database. It could be ClickHouse table, other table. It could be file, it could be executable script that returns data in some ClickHouse understandable format or it could be an HTTP service. Here is an example of configuration. It's an XML file uh, which is stored in uh, uh, configuration. And uh, here is a structure. So you see there is a source, lifetime, layout, a structure with ID and attributes, etc. I'm not going to go into much details here now. It's just an example so, so it gets you some sense some sense. The most important thing about dictionaries is that dictionaries are updatable, so, it, so the data can be replaced or refreshed. By default it's scheduled, uh, but it could, it could be automated or uh, done manually using system call. But it's refreshable. Uh, there are some restrictions with dictionaries. Uh, first is that uh, key, key column to dictionary of most efficient layout, it could be only of unsigned in 64 data type. Uh, there are other layouts where key type is different, can be different, string, any type of integer, or even composite key, uh, but then a little bit less, uh, less usable. Uh, the refresh is only full, it's not possible to change one record in dictionary. You need to refresh it in full. Uh, also, every cluster has its own copy of the dictionary and the data, so it's possible that data could be inconsistent between nodes, and you need to be careful about that. And it's not convenient that uh, the dictionary is defined in XML config. Mm -hmm. It's part of the schema, but it's defined somewhat externally. ClickHouse team is going to change that. So to summarize, uh, the pros uh, you don't need any join, you can update, and the 
dictionary is always in memory, so it's faster, faster for queries. Uh, all tables in Kalkhaus are usually on disk, and uh, Kalkhaus relies, relies on file system hash or operation system hash, but dictionaries of flat and hash layout are always in memory, so it's faster. Um, and on the negative side, it's not a part of the schema, and the syntax is somewhat not, not very convenient. Uh, now we uh, look into tables, and when you look into so many uh, engines, uh, you sometimes don't understand what needs to be used and when. So the most important uh, engines uh, are following. The memory engine can be used for temporary table. It's, uh, it can be used for permanent table as well, but usually it's used for temporary table. It's only in memory if server is shut down, the date is lost. Uh, the buffer table, uh, it can be used for uh, to buffer uh, small inserts. Small inserts accumulated in the in inside the buffer table and flushed then by click house using some threshold to the permanent table. Um, there are disk base, uh, the disk tables lock and tiny lock, uh, and the most important is merge T. Merge T is not just one engine, it's a series, it's, it's a family of engines with uh, uh, the, same uh, the same logic of merges uh, that Alexei talked about, uh, but different behavior, and I will talk briefly about that. There are also some interface engines which uh, do not store data but provide a different way to access the data. The distributed engine is interface to the table which is spread across multiple uh, nodes, multiple shards. And the merge engine is an interesting one. It's interface to the tables uh, uh, whose uh, the name of those are matching some regular expression. So you may have tables like T1, T2, T3, T4 and have a merge table with T, uh, T star or something like that, and it will query data from all these four tables, and they will look like a one table to you. Uh, the dictionary engine is an interface to dictionaries, um, and there are also some special purpose tables to use and utilize to use, and even now table, uh, a very, very useful engine, which allows you to, to send data to, to nowhere, just to the now useful for testing. Um, a few words about merge T. Uh, so merge uh, T uh, is the base of ClickHouse performance, and the idea is that uh, the blocks of data are sorted, and the merge process produce uh, the bigger sorted blocks. So this is very fast operations. So when the data is inserted, it is physically sorted and stored on the disk in the sort order of the primary key, and then the merge process takes several block, blocks, it merges them together into bigger block. There's a primary key index, Alexei uh, will talk in more detail about that uh, later, uh, so I will probably sk sk skip it for now. Um, the partitioning is also the feature of uh, merge the engine, and that allows, uh, that works for uh, two uh, different uh, use cases. The basic use case, and that's why the partition was by date or month originally, is to forget all data, it's data retention. But it's also, now it's possible to have partitioning by any column and it can be used, uh, for instance, to partition data by accounts, if you have some accounts, and that way manage them independently and also access them, access them faster, because ClickHouse implements partition pooling logic, uh, so, so partitioning key can be considered as a second second index to the table. As I mentioned, there is family of uh, engines uh, with different behavior, um, but uh, I'm not going to discuss them now. I, I will talk very, very briefly. So replacing merge t allows to replace uh, records in the merge t table with the same value of primary key. The replace doesn't take immediately, it takes during the merge operation. Uh, collapsing merge T uh, is somewhat similar but different. It allows you to update data 
in our stream, but again, it's not real update. In order to, to update the record, first uh, the record with the negative sign uh, is inserted, it's like a created node, and the second, the new record is inserted. So for update, need, uh, there are two inserts are required for collapse in our stream. And then merge process uh, take, uh, take his part in order to collapse it to, to one final row. Sum and an aggregate in our stream are very useful for online uh, aggregation. So when you insert data in your fact table and predict table, it's automatically aggregated in sum and or aggregated in our stream, and you have aggregate <coughs> with a smaller size and much faster performance. Could be different primary key for different uh, query scenarios, etc. Uh, very convenient and uh, very efficient. The data load uh, is also tricky. Um, uh, I will explain why. Uh, first, is ClickHouse is very powerful and it supports multiple formats, including uh, CSV, TSV, JSON, uh, some native format. Uh, there are some protobuf and uh, something else in the roadmap for as well. So basically, you can load from everywhere. Uh, Sometimes uh, you, uh, if you load a lot of data, you don't want to fail on the single error, and ClickHouse allows you to do that and skip certain number of errors. For instance, there could be some corrupted routes or formatting errors. And if you you're not, if you if you are key to skip them, you can skip them using these parameters. Uh, it's always better to load data locally to directly to shard where you want the data to be located, but ClickHouse allows you to automatically distribute data across multiple shards in distributed environment. Uh, some tricks, uh, ClickHouse loves big blocks. So if you if you want to have the optimal performance for ClickHouse, then try to load data in the biggest blocks uh, that you can. So one million rows is uh, uh, the default uh, default block size. So, so ClickHouse thinks that you, uh, it's, it, it's, it's a good size, right? You can increase it. And uh, this max insert block size parameter uh, allows you to do atomic insert. So the data is inserted in full or you have a failure and you know that nothing is inserted in this block. Uh, this is a key to a reliable insertion. It's also possible to use temporary table uh, with reliable insertion. So you first load to data to the temporary table, and if there is any error, it's a key to drop the table and reload. And then you set another parameter, max block size, which instructs ClickHouse how much data to process in the query in one block. And if you set it to the size of your data, all your data will be processed as one block. And then you insert it to the permanent table. This also gives you the atomic atomic insert. And if there are no big blocks, uh, it could be situation with some real-time producers, uh, then it's a key if uh, the insert rate is not very huge. Uh, if it's more than 10 inserts per second, you will likely uh, see the error message like, there are too many parts and ClickHouse processes uh, merges slower than insert, something like that. It's the common problem for people who start to insert very often. And the solution to that, you either use bigger blocks or use, buffer, or use big buffer tables. In buffer tables, ClickHouse builds bigger blocks for you. You can also use Kafka. Many, many companies are using Kafka for that ingestion. And in Kafka, you can control the block size. Uh, materialized views, this is what we discovered and use a lot. It's very powerful technology. Uh, underneath it's a table, so it has engine, application, and other properties. It's updated uh, synchronously with insert. Uh, and summon aggregating HD uh, give you consistent aggregation on fly, which is very powerful. Uh, on the negative side, it's not easy to alter materialized view especially if you need to alter primary key. It's, it's just not easy, it's not possible. So you need to recreate it and copy the data over. 
here's an example of data load diagram uh, when you have uh, log files uh, which uh, come to temperature tables or temperature flux tables. There are real time producers on the right uh, that go to buffer tables first and then flush to flux tables. There is a MySQL database on the uh, left which probably stores some CRM or ERP data or some dictionaries and this is a source for dictionaries for ClickHouse. And there are several materialized views that provide aggregated views to the data and uh, automatically calculated by ClickHouse. And this is just a single node. If you have multiple nodes, every node can look the same. So ClickHouse is absolutely a synchronic system. There are no need to have a master node or something. So you can load to any node uh, at any replica few words about updates and deletes. It's often uh, said that ClickHouse doesn't have updates and deletes, but at some form it does. So first, dictionaries are refreshable, and if you uh, have a dictionary engine table on top of dictionary, then you have a refreshable table. You can refresh the data completely in that. Also, replacing and collapse and merge three uh, give a way to have eventually updated <coughs> tables. And uh, last but not least, partitions allow to uh, drop the data or even move data between tables. And the roadmap, there is updates and deletes in the house somewhere in the future. Sharding and replication is very important for performance and reliability. Sharding and distribution gives you performance if uh, one node is not enough. And uh, the approach here is that fact tables and materialized views uh, needs to be distributed uh, under multiple shards. So you have the huge tables split into smaller parts so they can be processed independently and faster. But dimension tables and dictionaries, which are usually used in joins and filters, they need to be placed on every node. Otherwise, ClickHouse will have to move the data between nodes and this is not very efficient. Replication on the other hand, other hand, it's the key to, reali uh, to re reliability because you can lose a replica or several nodes in replica and continue to uh, do the business. So data is loading, queries are running, and just, uh, your engineers are working to recover servers. ClickHouse works if you have cross data center replication. Uh, but you need to be careful about latency and about your query locality. So your query needs to go to one replica and do not jump between replicas. ClickHouse has special settings in order to achieve that. Uh, here's an example of distributed query. So actually when query comes to ClickHouse and it should be executed in, com in a distributed way, ClickHouse generates uh, the smaller queries to every node which, uh, uh, which is used to serve the query, <coughs> then collects results to the node initiator and uh, does uh, regrouping. It's kind of similar to what MapReduce does, but only to SQL. Uh, replication, uh, ClickHouse is very flexible on how replication can be configured. So you can configure virtually any topology in one cluster. The most typical topologies uh, are free. Dimension tables are usually replicated to any nodes, to any node. So uh, fact tables are usually replicated to a uh, mirror replica. And uh, it's possible to have cross replication when one table is replicated to the same nodes, but in the different order. It's kind of uh, not very convenient to configure, but it also works. This is approach similar to what you have in vertical, for instance. Zookeeper is required for replication, but it doesn't replicate data by itself, it only communicates the state. State about what blocks and parts need to replicate. And ClickHouse uh, does the replication by itself. <coughs> ClickHouse supports asynchronous and synchronous replication. So asynchronous is faster and reliable enough. Synchronous is slower, but it's more consistent if you need 100% consistency on the uh, query result. It's very important is to isolate query to replica, and this is what we learned. Uh, and uh, monitor replication queues. For instance, if your data center is uh, 
somewhat uh, somewhat far away, and the network is not very good. But the replication queues may be pretty significant, and the replica can be behind uh, not in second but in minutes, and this could be not very good. Usually, the delay is several seconds. Uh, this is uh, an example of topology with uh, two two replicas. And now we switch to SQL. Uh, Clickhouse is a SQL database, so it's, it does support SQL uh, with the basic SQL syntax of uh, SQL 92. It does support joins, but joins with non-standards. Uh, what, what is non-standard? Uh, uh, there is any and all join. All is like standard join in any uh, traditional database, but any has the different semantics. So instead of taking everything from the right part of the, of the join, it just takes first match in row. Uh, in Clickhouse SQL, you, you can alias any expression or part, of, or part of, of expression. In traditional SQL databases, you can only have aliases for, for expressions used in the, in the query. So you can, and, and sometimes it's, uh, And in ClickHouse, you can have alias for anything and then refer it uh, to the different in the different part of the query. Sometimes it allows you to shorten the, the query uh, very significantly. Also, ClickHouse has very powerful support for array and nested data types. With uh, it's it's really built for developers because it uh, it uh, supports lambda expressions uh, in functional style. It uh, so you can do with arrays almost anything you can do in functional language like Lisp or uh, Scala or whatever. It has approximate queries, uh, a lot of domain-specific functions, and these domain-specific functions they continue to appear because some contributors uh, from outside of Yandex they start to add their own domain-specific functions. So the library of functions is growing, and the basic support for magic functions also exists. For example, running difference uh, or, or top key. Here are limitations uh, for SQL. And why it's important? Uh, limitation is, impo is important because these limitations uh, doesn't allow ClickHouse to be used in existing BI tools like I don't know, business objects, microstrategy, or Tableau. They don't understand ClickHouse dialect. And Clickhouse team is working on uh, make, on making SQL compatible. Few words about hardware and deployment. Uh, so different parameters uh, of <coughs> server uh, they they uh, serve different things. When the data load is CPU intensive because Clickhouse needs to parse uh, parse the incoming data and uh, make apply compression etc. So it requires more cores and more CPU, CPU clock. Uh, the queries are usually discontensive because it needs to go to data across multiple nodes, across a lot of disks. So faster disks are usually better for faster queries. If you have huge source, uh, so group by by a lot of dimensions, uh, they require more memory. If you have a lot of users uh, that are executing uh, queries, they also uh, compete for memory, competing for memory, so you require, more, you require more memory. So the configuration of the server is dependent on uh, what is your load and what is your use case. Regarding disk drives, usually SATA drives in RAID 10 are good enough, uh, especially if, if you have 10 or 12 uh, drives in the RAID, and you certainly can get the better performance using SAS or SSD uh, drives but it comes uh, for a price, so it's, it's much more expensive. Uh, so we think that server with uh, 192 gigabytes of RAM and 10 terabytes per server uh, is optimal configuration, but it could be different for, again, for different use case. Uh, Zookeeper uh, needs to be in one data, data center for past quorum. It's not very good for reliability, but in the second data center, it's possible to configure the keeper in uh, observer mode. 
like a hot, like a hot standby. But the primary Zookeeper cluster needs to be in one data, the data center. Otherwise, inserts will be very slow. So main challenges revisited. This is what uh, you have to deal with. Schema design, uh, sharding and replication design, data ingestion, and uh, client interfaces. So for live step, uh, we started in June 2016. In August, we did a proof of concept. In October, there were first test runs. In December, we uh, started to test with production scale data load. So it's 10 to 50 billion events per day for 20 terabytes of raw data per day. We tested it on only 12 servers per replica. In March, uh, we uh, migrated client API and uh, um, and a little bit later, we had to extend uh, the cluster to 60 servers and three replicas. And in June, migration has been completed. So the project took one year. It's not very fast, uh, but it was a huge pro project of a huge production system uh, that was live and was tested live. And it completely replaced our old vertical system. Few examples. Um, I like. Uh, I like to show them. Here's a query that returns almost one trillion re one trillion records. It counts count from the table of one trillion records, and it takes four seconds to execute. Very fast. I think the numbers are close to what uh, what guys have on their backs. <laughs> in terms of performance. <coughs> uh, now we add a filter, uh, so, so it's now not very difficult uh, query. It's uh, much faster with filter uh, and uh, much less rows to process. Here is an example of the query with, uh, with the dictionary. So it's a real query with group Y, etc. On the table of one trillion rows, you, you saw this table. And it still takes uh, two seconds. Uh, and we can a little bit optimize that. So it takes even uh, one and a half second. What's the difference here, if you, if you notice? In the first case, uh, we, we, we sorted by primary code, primary, we sorted by county code, which is string, and use dictionary code on every row. In the second case, we sorted by country key, which is integer, <laughs> And we didn't use dictionary call until until the last stage. So this is the difference. ClickHouse can do that automatically, some, such sort of query optimizations, by, by the way. But we didn't know about that, and we use manual optimizations. And here's an example uh, that demonstrates why ClickHouse is so fast. This is the data size for the table. You can see that the, the, row, the row size is uh, almost five petabytes of data, but it takes only 300 terabytes on the disks. So compression ratio is one to 16. So it has been compressed in 16 times. Uh, this is one of the reasons why ClickHouse is so fast. So now uh, in January 2018, ClickHouse is one and a half year in open source. It has 100 plus production installations worldwide. <coughs> it has public change logs, roadmaps, and plans. Five youngest developers, and actually a lot of community contributors. With every new release, uh, we see that uh, features included from different companies, not just from Yandex. There is an active community blogs from different companies uh, that are sharing their ClickHouse experience case studies and there is a support by the team if you need to. So final words. Try ClickHouse for your big data case. It's very easy now. It's much easier than we did uh, more than a year ago. If you need more info, there is a ClickHouse Yandex and Yandex folks that can answer. And if you need any help with, uh, with your implementation project, you can contact them. That's it. Thank you, Paul Alexander. Any questions? Two questions for Alexander. Okay, uh, I see that, that, that one. The first. Okay. Okay, I, I have a few questions.
it's an answer to you. Uh, the first one is uh, does ClickHouse support the DTL feature? I mean, it's time to live feature. No. Uh, yes, that's my uh, your next question. If not, so how can we create too much data in ClickHouse that's like a billion, billion data? Uh, it, it depends on your use case. So uh, if, if you store data in the table with, uh, what, what is your detail requirements? Is it seconds, minutes, or hours, or weeks, or what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we want to store only uh, 30 days, for 30 days, you need to use partitions. Yeah. So you can partition your data by day, and uh, every day drop the 31 partition, the oldest partition. And you will always have 30 days of data in your table. Then I can create another partition. Yes, right. you, you just drop uh, the oldest partition, and that's it. OK, thank you. Uh, if what he wants is just to, to store one day's data into one file, uh, he saw that there uh, one file will include uh, more than one day. Then how can we do that? Uh, again, the same as the previous uh, previous question. You need to partition your data by day. The default is by month, but you can partition the data by day, and then you will. You, you can have the one file per day after the merge process takes place. Alexei uh, will show you in the next presentation uh, uh, some details about partitioning and I have a question about the uh, transaction aspect of loading. Uh, so if I have one back table and I define several materialized view on it, um, does uh, does big house guarantees uh, autonomy and uh, consistency properties of load? Yes, it uh, it does. Uh, there were bugs uh, some time ago when there could be some inconsistency, but generally, yes, it does. It uh, provides a consistent view of materialized views. Okay. Um, um, the second view is about materialized view. Um, what kind of materialized view can um, can big house per planner recognize? Can I define a uh, count distinct on view? Uh, for count distinct, you can use uh, uh, aggregated materialized view with, but but you have to use uh, the state combinators. State, state combinators. State yes, in ClickHouse, um, for every aggregating function, uh, there are com there are different combinators. There is state combinator and there is merge combinator. State combinator allows you to have uh, the partial aggregation state, and with the state combinator, you can have materialized view with the count distinct. Um, I actually have a slide to show that. Uh, but is it interesting to everybody? Yeah, yeah. If not, I, I can show it to you after that. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So this is actually uh, a question from a friend, and he, he was he wanted to ask like, uh, just like you mentioned, like uh, in the dictionary uh, engine, right? 
So uh, you also demonstrate that uh, we can use MySQL to provide the best data source. So this question is, uh, will MySQL be replaced by other KV database like Redis or Elvis Black uh, will be having a better performance? It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what what source is used uh, as a dictionary source, okay. because ClickHouse accesses a dictionary which is already cached in memory, okay. and it doesn't access the source directly using query execution. Okay. It's only accessed using dictionary refresh, uh, and it doesn't affect any query performance. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much.呃，大家知道那个，的确，Clickhouse的速度比比其他要快很多。像那个一般的online大赛里面，它第一名的有Clickhouse的这个信用，第第二名是Spark的，大概快了一个数量级。所以今年也是我们会在十月份再继续举办
will know your data much more in intimately. And also data is updated in real time. Like um, earlier, you uh, had those uh, nightly ETL job that will uh, like take your main database and then load data into a separate data warehouse uh, where it will then become available for queries. But um, for Click House, we just want uh, data to be available for selects immediately. Um, and for that, um, something is needed from you, from application developers. And uh, it is clean structured data. So uh, when you develop an application that inserts into ClickHouse, you must um, look at your event and decide which attributes are important to you. Uh, and then you must uh, extract them, uh, clean them up, and only then load uh, clean structured data into ClickHouse. So for instance, um, if you have integers, uh, don't load strings into ClickHouse. And if you have some JSONs, uh, then parse JSONs before inserting into ClickHouse. Uh, and uh, not just insert JSONs in hope that you will parse them later. Um, okay, another thing. Uh, when you're building a backend for web analytics, it's very tempting to uh, say, okay, I need this report, this report, and this report, and I will just pre-aggregate data for these reports, and when I need to show them, I will just uh, show them from pre-aggregated data. And th this approach is actually pretty good because it has good performance, uh, but what you lose with this approach is flexibility. So when you uh, aggregate two events, you can't unaggregate them later. And uh, so in ClickHouse, we try hard um, so that generating reports on raw unaggregated events is possible. Uh, and I encourage you to try this. And, uh, um, but of course, you can still aggregate the data in ClickHouse if uh, 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 you can't query raw data. Another trade-off is a query language. And here you can um, just give more power to your user. For instance, uh, in Hadoop, you can write your MapReduce jobs in any language. Uh, but um, with this trade-off comes inefficiency. So you can't execute uh, this user-defined scripts efficiently. Uh, and in ClickHouse, um, we choose to execute um, a more declarative language, which uh, is more constrained, but it can be executed efficiently. And of course, we um, use SQL, uh, because everybody knows SQL, it's very popular. So um, I need a sample query um, to talk about. It. And uh, this is actually a pretty simple query, but it has all the distinct features. So suppose I'm developing a web analytics system and I want to calculate for a website top 10 refers for the last week. Uh, so I store uh, my page views in the table hit, hits, uh, which has a column counter ID, which identifies the website. Uh, column date, which uh, stores the event date. Column referrer, uh, which stores a referrer string. And also maybe a hundred of other attributes. Um, so here is a simple SQL query that uh, calculates top 10 refers. Uh, pretty standard. Uh, so how do I execute this query fast? First, I need to uh, read the data fast. And here I must say that uh, ClickHouse is optimized for spinning disks. Uh, it's not that um, ClickHouse will not run on SSDs because, well, everything runs better on SSDs. Uh, but 
uh, SSDs may be not the cost effective, not the most cost effective solution for you, and you can be sure that if you install ClickHouse on uh, spinning disks, it will work just fine. Um, so the first thing that we need is um, column-oriented storage, because remember I've told you that we have uh, potentially hundreds of attributes, uh, and for this sample query we need only three. Um, so we need to have uh, ability to load columns separately, load only needed columns. And for this, uh, column-oriented storage is essential. Um, next, of course, uh, we uh, don't want to read the whole table, so we need some kind of index, and I'll talk about it later. Um, but even if we have index, uh, we want locality of reads. So what I mean by this is that we should read data from disk uh, in a few uninterrupted stretches, uh, as few as possible. Um, then um, loading data will be fast. And of course, uh, the data must be compressed on disk, uh, because if the data is compressed, uh, uh, you can save disk bandwidth and just load data faster. And that, that's another um, advantage of column-oriented storage, because if you store uh, similar data together, it just compresses better. So after you've uh, loaded your data into memory, you need to process it fast. And um, uh, the most important uh, optimization here is vectorized execution. So ClickHouse operates on blocks of data. A block is uh, a small piece of table, uh, several columns, and several uh, thousand of rows. Uh, why is it important? Because uh, ClickHouse is an interpreter. And uh, you know that interpreters are slow. Uh, slow because they need to pay the cost of dynamic dispatch. And uh, when ClickHouse executes uh, on blocks, uh, it pays this cost uh, for several thousands of rows. So this cost doesn't matter. And uh, the query just executes faster. And of course, when you have blocks, uh, then they j can just uh, stay in CPU cache. And uh, when you uh, process data in these blocks, it can just stay in cache and not touch the main memory. So processing data in blocks is very cache friendly. Uh, and of course, when your data is stored in arrays, uh, contiguous in memory, then you can apply SIMD instructions uh, for even more efficient processing. Uh, next, uh, you, in OLAP scenario, you uh, often have a small amount of very heavy queries. Uh, and that means for each query, you should try to um, utilize all the resources that you have. So for instance, if you're uh, executing on the multi-core processor, you need to utilize all cores for the single query. And if your data is stored on multiple machines, uh, you need to utilize all the uh, cores that are on these machines. And the uh, final uh, point is specialization. It means that uh, uh, when you know something about your data, like uh, type or cardinality or string length, then you can apply uh, more efficient algorithms than generic ones. Uh, so it's very important for you to choose uh, right types for your click house columns because it can be it can make a very big difference in performance. For instance, we have uh, specialized algorithms for strings of length 16, uh, which can be used to store IPv6 addresses. Okay, so what about index? How do you choose index? Um, and uh, the principle is the same uh, with, as with another databases. So you think about your queries, uh, what kind of conditions are in these queries, uh, and uh, 
what conditions appear in most queries. So in our case of web analytics system, most queries will contain uh, a condition on counter ID or a website ID and uh, possibly a date range. Uh, so we can choose a counter ID date as an index. And how do I know that uh, this index is good? Uh, so the process is as follows. Uh, imagine that your table is sorted according to the primary key expression and imagine uh, how do uh, the range of rows that is needed to execute the query looks like. And if it's a small compact uh, extent range or a few compact ranges, then uh, index uh, expression is good. Uh, and I must say that although we uh, call it primary key, it's uh, not really a unique constraint. So in a classical databases, primary key implies unique constraint, but not in ClickHouse. And uh, the table will be physically sorted according to this expression. So um, you can make only one such index for a table. So if you need two indexes, for instance, you may need to uh, create another table with the same data. So here is uh, a picture of index internals. Pretty complicated, but I'll try to explain. Um, so here is a physical representation of the index. It contains uh, values of the index expression. Um, for each 8,192 rows. So uh, this constant is called index granularity, uh, and it means that index is a sparse index. So it doesn't index every row, but it indexes every few thousand rows. Uh, index is, because it's a sparse index, it's always loaded in memory. Uh, we can afford that. Uh, and when the query is executed, uh, ClickHouse will use an uh, algorithm similar to binary search and uh, to determine the range uh, where um, the rows needed for the query uh, are. So in our case, remember that we needed counter ID 111 and um, data for the last week. But because the index is sparse, we need to get not only uh, this row, but uh, a few thousand rows uh, before this row and a few thousand rows after this row. Um, and so it's a few thousand rows more, but it's not a problem in a typical analytical query because it will process millions of rows. Uh, next, we need to load the data itself. Data is stored in bin files, uh, which contain compressed values uh, for uh, each column. And what's important is that all values for all columns are stored um, in the order defined by this expression. So each uh, value, each values for each column are stored in the same order, the order defined by the primary key. And for each column, there is a mark file, which contains um, pointers um, for to the values that correspond uh, to each uh, primary key uh, row. So here we must load this extent of our table. We go to uh, this mark, start here, and read till here and repeat for the same call for each column that we need for this query and uh, read this data and uncomp uncompress it and load it in memory uh, and as i have told you we have loaded more rows than needed so after we have loaded it uh, we will still need to filter it some more and uh, here it is in dark gray it is the rows that we actually need for execution of our query.
So uh, here are the main things that you should remember about indexes. Uh, first, and the main thing is that the index is sparse, um, and it must fit into memory. So there is no point in adding a lot of columns uh, in the index, making it very long. So just add a few most common columns, and that will be enough. Um, you shouldn't change the default value of granularity. I think it will be okay for almost everyone. And the index does not create a unique constraint. And um, it is not very good for point queries. So for queries where, where you need, suppose you need one row, uh, then uh, for sparse index, you will have to load a few thousand rows. And of course, performance will not be as good as uh, for the index that indexes every row. Um, and of course you should remember that the table is sorted according to the index and there can be only one such index. So I have told you that the data is sorted, uh, but there is a small problem. Uh, we need data sorted according to primary key, uh, but the data counts sorted almost by time. So um, typically recent events come and uh, it means that uh, if you just um, insert events as is, they will be sorted by time and we need them to be sorted by primary key. Uh, so the solution uh, in ClickHouse is a merge tree engine uh, and the idea is to maintain a small set of sorted parts. And when this set grows because of inserts, uh, you just merge a few parts into one sorted part, and thus this set um, stays small. So it's a similar idea to LSM tree. Okay, here is a picture. Uh, on the y-axis, uh, you have primary key. Um, and on the horizontal axis, it's insertion number. So data gets inserted from this side. Um, here we have a few parts on disk and um, a new batch of data has arrived. Uh, it's green dots uh, and it's unsorted. What does ClickHouse do? First, it will sort uh, the new batch and then it will just write it to disk as is. So by default, what's important, by default there is no buffering and each insert uh, that you perform will land on disk as a separate part in the format that we discussed previously. Uh, so having um, big batches in your inserts is very important because if you will insert small batches, there will be a lot of parts and you will see this to many parts message. So now after some time has passed uh, and some more parts have been inserted, uh, we need to perform the merge. And here is a small um, peculiarity in ClickHouse merge is um, that it merges only parts that correspond to adjacent inserts. It's important for the work of the collapsing merge tree engine. So here we merge two parts uh, and create one sorted part. So uh, merging is a wonderful thing because uh, during the merge process, uh, values with the same primary key value come together and you can do additional things with them. So for instance, um, you can have a limited uh, capacity for update. And uh, Alexander has told you about it, uh, about it a bit. Um, so basically when you insert rows with new values, when you want update, uh, and merge process will take care of the old values. You can also pre-aggregate data. Uh, so um, you will have uh, data with the same primary key and many rows will be aggregated into one and then you can 
merge the aggregated states and have the final value. Or if you're storing uh, metrics in graphite merge tree, you can do metrics roll up. So for instance, you have metrics for uh, lots of values for a single hour, and you can just collapse it into one value. So it's uh, pretty efficient for storing all data. Okay, next uh, is partitioning. Um, merge tables, uh, tables with merge tree engine are partitioned. Uh, and in most systems, partitions are for performance. Uh, but in ClickHouse, partitions are uh, mainly for convenience. So um, partitions, um, what does it mean that table is partitioned? Parts in, from different partitions are not merged together, so they stay separate. And that allows uh, easy manipulation of partitions. So for instance, you can drop uh, a single partition from uh, the table. The data just disappears. Or you can detach a partition and then move it to another server and attach there. So it's an efficient way to move data between servers. And uh, uh, partitions can even uh, add performance because uh, the, uh, each part stores a minimum and maximum values for partition columns uh, and it uses them to prune the parts that it needs to read to execute the query. Uh, partitions, uh, tables are partitioned by month by default, uh, which is what you, if you use ClickHouse, what you are used to, but in recent versions, you can partition by uh, any expression or just have a table without partition. So things to, mer to remember about merge tree. First is that uh, merges run in the background and it's a common question, uh, what is my server doing when I'm not doing anything with it? Well, the answer is that it's merging data, it's okay. It's very good. And the second important thing, it's very important to control the total number of parts uh, in your tables or you will lose the capacity to insert. So first is you should limit rate of inserts to about one per second. Uh, and next you should uh, monitor these metrics. Uh, first is called max parts count for partition and it should stay uh, preferably less than 100. And the second is called delayed inserts uh, and it should stay zero. So if you have non-zero delayed inserts, then you should investigate. So uh, let's talk about the case when one server is not enough. Uh, so the most obvious reason is that the data won't just fit on a single server, but it can also be the case when um, you want more performance and you just want uh, to add hardware and get more performance out of ClickHouse. And um, ClickHouse uh, allows doing it with sharding and distributed tables. Uh, sharding is a simple concept, is that you split your data and um, store different parts of your table on different servers. And uh, for easy sharding, ClickHouse uses distributed tables. So distributed tables is a kind of view uh, into local tables. So here in my picture, I have three shards. Each of them has a local table, uh, which stores the actual data. And there is a distributed table uh, created over uh, these local tables. And actually, you can create distributed tables anywhere. Uh, it may be on a separate node, or it's just uh, more convenient to just create a distributed table on every shard. So what happens when um, you run a select from a distributed table? First, the query is rewritten. Uh, so this distributed table gets uh, substituted for local tables. Uh, and uh, this rewritten query is then sent to shards 
and then uh, shards executed in parallel. And uh, shards will try to execute query um, to maximum point. So for instance, if um, your query is an aggregation, shards will partially aggregate the result and then send this aggregating function states back to the originator, which will then combine them and send the final result back to the user. So here is a small benchmark. Um, it's a pretty famous data set of New York Xerites, writes, uh, 1.3 billion rows. And uh, the query is again aggregation. Here we compute um, average uh, fare for trip, uh, depending on passenger count. And uh, if you store your data on one shard, you can execute uh, this query in about one second, which is uh, pretty good. Uh, then you can uh, shard your uh, data on three nodes. Uh, this will get you almost three times speed up, uh, which is uh, great. But then you can decide to um, share this data to 140 servers, and then of course you will not get the linear speed up, uh, but you will still get pretty impressive uh, speed up, so it will, uh, the query is basically instantaneous, uh, 400, four uh, tenths of milliseconds. But of course, the speed up is not 140, it's just 30. Because uh, at this uh, point, network latencies start to dominate. So how do you insert in distributed table? Uh, the most simple and uh, most flexible way is to insert directly into local tables. And uh, remember that uh, distributed table will always query all local tables, all shards. So it's uh, actually not very important for correctness how exactly do you distribute your data, but it's very important for performance. Uh, and actually, uh, if you want convenience, uh, you can insert directly into distributed table. Uh, and then there is a thing that you must remember is that Inserts into distributed table are asynchronous by default. What does that mean? Uh, so when you insert your data into the distributed table, it will just write it into a temporary folder uh, on the same server that you insert it to and immediately return. Uh, then in the background, uh, it will uh, decide where to insert the data uh, according to the sharding key that you have defined, uh, and then insert this data into the background. So um, here is the problem that um, there may be a problem with the, this process, but you won't notice it because if you insert into the distributed table, uh, it will just return okay to you. But uh, the da data may just lie in the temporary folder, not available for selects on local shards. So if you insert into distributed table, then you just uh, should monitor the amount of this temporary data that is not yet inserted. And actually in uh, the newer versions, uh, there is a feature that is not enabled by default. You should enable it with setting insert distributed sync uh, setting. Uh, with this setting enabled, distributed table will just split the data, send it to shards, and wait for acknowledgments from shards or for timeouts. So you can try this. Okay, distributed table is just a view. It doesn't store any data except for this temporary data that it has not yet inserted into the shards. Um, it will always query all shards. So uh, sharding key is not used in any way during select. Um, so you must ensure that the data is um, divided into shards uniformly. 
So you can insert directly to local tables, or if you use distributed table, uh, you should monitor um, its inserting capacity and uh, see that there is um, no leftover fails, files in uh, temporary directories. So let's talk about failures. Um, there are actually two kinds of failures. First is, uh, for example, disk failure, uh, when uh, the data that is on the disk is lost forever, but of course we don't lose, we don't want to lose this data. Um, and the second kind of failure is temporary failure, for instance, network failure. And in the case of temporary failure, we want to be um, available for both reads and writes because we don't want to uh, drop the data on the floor while we are unavailable. So in ClickHouse, uh, we have uh, a synchronous master-master replication uh, for that task and it works on a per table basis, not on a per server basis. So uh, you can have on the same server uh, unreplicated tables, replicated tables that replicate to the same replica or replicate to the different replica. So it's really flexible. So here is uh, how replication works. Uh, again, pretty complicated diagram. Um, here we have three replicas, uh, one, two, and three, and each of them has a set of parts. And this is the same parts that we talked about previously. Uh, and what are they trying to do? They're trying to um, make sure that this set of parts is the same on each replica. And for coordination of this process, they use Zookeeper. Uh, Zookeeper is mandatory if you want to use replication. And uh, actually there are three types of events that can happen. First is an insert. Insert can go into any replica. Uh, so when you insert, for instance, into the first replica, a new part is created. Uh, information about this part is uh, written into Zookeeper and other replicas are not notified about the, the fact that new part appeared, so they can begin to download it. Uh, next, there is a fetch. Uh, so when a replica uh, notices that it doesn't have some part, it <coughs> initiates downloading the part from another replica. So in this case, replica one uh, notices that it misses the part here and it will download the part from the other replica. And, uh, of course, a replica can merge um, several parts into one part. Uh, and uh, this process must be coordinated. So all replicas must merge the same sets of parts. Or it will become very difficult to maintain the same uh, set of parts on replicas. For that purpose, we uh, elect the leader replica. Uh, it is not a master replica, inserts can go anywhere, I repeat, but this leader replica, it alone will decide uh, which parts should be merged. And then it will write uh, this information to Zookeeper and other replicas will execute these merges. And thus, a uh, set of parts will stay the same on different replicas. So each discussion of uh, replication I must mention cap theorem. So what happens uh, in the case of network failure or network partition? And the cap theorem states that uh, if this happens, you can't ha have both consistency. So we, all your replicas uh, return the same data. Or uh, you can be available. So you can answer queries. What about ClickHouse and replicated tables? 
uh, ClickHouse is not consistent. Uh, and of course, this is uh, true for any system with a synchronous replication. For instance, a synchronous replication in Postgres works is just not just as inconsistent as ClickHouse because if you insert data into a replica and immediately after that it is partitioned, uh, then other replicas will just not get the data that you have inserted. Uh, but there is a green uh, asterisk here, is that you can turn consistency on. So there is a certain setting called um, insert quorum, uh, and if you turn it on, um, writes and reads will become consistent. Uh, but of course, the performance will suffer and uh, some of the queries will fail in case of a network partition. ClickHouse is highly available, uh, almost. Like wh what I mean by almost, it's highly available in a practical sense. So if you, you can have uh, ClickHouse replicas in two data centers uh, and Zookeeper replicas in three data centers, then you can tolerate the failure of any data center and still accept reads and writes. But here is this red star and it tells us that in a strict sense, uh, the house is not fully highly available. available. Like the server that is partitioned from Zookeeper Quorum uh, will not accept writes. Okay. So um, on this slide we have uh, distributed tables and replicated tables. These are two distinct features. Uh, you can have one without the other, uh, but they work really well in concert. So uh, here is a typical ClickHouse cluster. You have a lot of shards, uh, each of them with two in this case or three replicas. Uh, and dis distributed tables are aware of replication and they will um, send their uh, query to only one uh, replica of each chart. And uh, distributed tables are capable of failover, so uh, if a replica is unavailable or if it's lagging, like it can't keep up with the replication, <laughs> the query will just fail over to another replica. Okay, things to remember about replication. First is that there is, uh, of course, increased complexity in replication because you have to install this Zookeeper cluster, but uh, you should use it because uh, replication is uh, very useful. First, replicas check each other. They calculate chick sums of parts, and if they don't match, uh, then um, the replica that is wrong will just download the part again, and um, the replicas will stay bit identical. Next, there is a problem in distributed insert. So for instance, suppose you have inserted something, and then uh, uh, there was a network problem. So you are unsure if insert went through or it didn't. What should you do? With ClickHouse and replicated tables, you simply retry. Uh, because, so you insert exact same data, and if it was inserted, it will be deduplicated. And if it wasn't inserted, it will be inserted. Um, so Zookeeper <coughs> is needed, uh, but it will add latency only for inserts. That's another reason to prefer big inserts instead of many small ones. Uh, but for selects, it will not add any latency. And of course, you should uh, monitor replication. For that, you can use a system replicas table, which contains a replication leg, and system replication queue table, uh, which contains more detailed information, which you can use to diagnose problems with replication. Okay, so here's a brief recap. ClickHouse is a column-oriented database with fast interactive queries that operate on data updated in real time. 
It's query language is SQL dialect with extensions. Uh, it's a bad fit for OTP uh, scenario, key value scenario, storage of large blobs. It can scale linearly, it's fault tolerant, and it's open source. Thank you, and ask your questions. So you uh, mean if you have materialized view? Uh, no, uh, you 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 says just uh, refi refi the yes. insert, but uh, if you have inserted some uh, some part of the data, mm -hmm. re refi this insert, the the data will uh, will be duplicated. Uh, uh, replicated merge tree will keep track of duplicates, so it stores uh, checksums of. Uh, last 100 inserted blocks and if insert went through and you retry it it will just not insert anything so it will not be a problem but if insert didn't went through and you retry it uh, the data will uh, land in the table and everything will be okay uh, so, so your uh, your suggestion is just uh, refine the uh, the insert. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, I uh, can't uh, can't believe that, but I can I, I can try, have a try and uh, mm -hmm. to make sure. Yeah. Yes, you could try it uh, even without any problem. If you insert something and you insert it again, and you check them, uh, the data will be inserted only once. Yes, uh, and the important thing is that you should uh, insert the exact same rows in exact same order. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, uh, can you explain more how, 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 how you do this? Uh, the checksum of this block is calculated and stored in Zookeeper. And uh, if it matches, the uh, block inserted block is just thrown away. Okay, so if this table is not uh, uh, re replicated mm -hmm. in the merge tree, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we, we can't just uh, refine. If it's not replicated, you shouldn't do it. Okay. Next question. Okay. Uh, just, now, just now you mentioned uh, the magic tree uh, is similar with the error tree, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, it's a uh, benefit for the factual insert, uh, uh, not the small uh, mm -hmm. render insert. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is it similar with the level DB? I am familiar with level DB, mm -hmm. but uh, he have three uh, uh, three um, uh, com uh, com components: uh, the lock uh, and the merge table, uh, memory table, mm -hmm. uh, and the. Uh, uh, you uh, you uh, click house can use the buffer engine uh, to uh, mm -hmm. to uh, acc accumulate the small insert. Then uh, mm -hmm. uh, when it's full, then uh, batch write uh, batch write batch insert. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it uh, uh, take the risk uh, uh, the data loss when the node crash uh, the the server node crash. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, do you have the plan? Use your existing uh, um, engine uh, log uh, buffer and uh, merging tree. Uh, 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 use uh, and uh, just like the level DB, you use three uh, common uh, com component uh, to employ a, a, a full log error uh, machine. Mm -hmm. Can you get me? 
So actually, yes, <laughs> I, I've got you. Um, yes, the question is that merge tree is uh, simpler than LSM tree. Merge tree is just one component of uh, LSM tree. Um, well, actually, I think a good solution in this case will be to use uh, a distributed log like Kafka, uh, which can um, get you full tolerance. Uh, and then you will just insert from Kafka to click house. Uh, uh, this uh, 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 consumer the data from Kafka mm -hmm. not uh, frequently. Mm -hmm. uh, just the so Kafka will uh, get you full tolerance and big batches. And so that's uh, two of the things that you want. And the third thing will be provided by click house. Oh, yes, this is the solution. And, uh, mm -hmm. you uh, very, uh, very uh, frequent uh, uh, mm -hmm. okay. There is a question from online. Uh, the question is, I think, uh, similar to the question in the morning. Uh, his question is, there will be a, a, a merging process in the back end. How to, uh, and that will affect the performance of query. How to balance that? Mm -hmm. uh, so actually if you insert a lot of data uh, there will be um, a lot of merging processes so and they will consume um, a lot of resources uh, and uh, currently it's not possible to strictly separate these uh, resource pools for merging and for uh, queries. So one thing that you can try is that uh, you can uh, lower the number of threads that do merging. Uh, that way you can free up uh, resources for queries. Uh, but there is, um, uh, there can be a problem that uh, merges uh, will not uh, keep up with inserts. So you can try to lower uh, the threads that merge, uh, but uh, you should do it carefully. Okay, next question. Okay, this one. Um, so first of all, thank you for your very informative presentation. And um, my question is more related to resharding and migration. And I believe this is a question that uh, a lot of hackers uh, use in Canada to validate. So, uh, what is the best practice to migrate a TV level data from an old cluster to a, data, to a new cluster that contains more machines? So, uh, we know that we have the options to add a sharding weight, so to make sure that the newer, uh, the newer entity uh, So, I mean, if we are just com just just copy those uh, data files directly to the new cluster, and then there will be uh, a couple of new machines which are actually empty. In that case, it means the new data will, will be concentrated on like one of uh, a couple of machines, which might not be leveraging the whole power of the whole clusters. So, how are we going to, to tackle that uh, in assuming that the resharding functionality comes in some way? Mm -hmm. And uh, a second variation of this question is so. Uh, I uh, understand that currently we have added a new feature which is uh, originally needed to partition by month and now we have new features to partition by date. So we also would like to, uh, would like to have a child like this. But of course in this case actually uh, uh, it, it means kind of we, we need to change the partition totally which means we, we cannot just simply just copy the whole data file directly to the new cluster. So in this case then how, how, how can we So here are two questions. First is about resharding. Um, and uh, yes, resharding is uh, kind of a problem. So when you grow your cluster um, and you add um, more machines, then you can end up with recent data stored on um, your new machines and all data that is not very much needed 
uh, stored on your old machines. Uh, and currently you can kind of solve it manually by um, moving the partitions uh, from new servers to old, but of course it's manual time consuming process. Uh, and actually, if you are migrating to a completely new cluster, um, then we have a solution uh, which is currently in development, and I think it will be released soon. <laughs> because we have the same problem, we need to migrate our data into newer cluster, and uh, for that we have developed this um, ClickHouse Kafir solution, it will be called, it will be released um, uh, soon. That's the first question. And the second was about how to transfer data between tables with different partition key. Uh, so currently there is no simple solution because uh, as I have shown you, the data gets rearranged and uh, if you want more granular partition, then you must repartition. And the easiest way to do it is just by doing insert select. So it's painful, but it's inevit inevitable. Next question. Okay. So. So the question is how to transfer data from MySQL to ClickHouse. Um, well, I don't think I don't know about anything special. You just uh, like. Uh, uh, create CSV files or TSV files with your MySQL tables and load them into ClickHouse. Okay. Can you add something? Uh, just use MySQL dump utility to create tab separated file and uh, load it to ClickHouse with uh, ClickHouse command line client. Okay. Uh, uh, Found, uh, 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 he just asked for an uh, example for that. I think you can, you can listen to the next partner, which is from Asina. <laughs> you can see uh, what he said. Okay. Yeah, okay. Next question? That one? Yeah. From that part. Uh, the, the, the first question is if there is a lot of, uh, because there is a lot of dimensions, if, if he uh, uh, make a lot of uh, primary keys, is that will affect the performance of the house? That's the first question. And the second. Uh, if, if he does decide to use date, date as a partition uh, key that will affect the performance. Question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first question about uh, primary key. Um, well, you shouldn't put a lot of attributes in primary key. Uh, rule of thumb is it should stay short. Um, uh, just a few columns that are most important. Why it is so? First, uh, because it's sparse index, um, there can actually be um, no added benefit uh, for these additional columns uh, because it's sparse index. It will just uh, 
uh, for the index to have uh, benefits, you want your So here we can use the index uh, because um, this column stays the same between rows. Uh, and if uh, you add a lot of dimensions, for instance, here, 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 uh, then the last ones will just change rapidly between these rows. Uh, so there will be no added benefit in them. So as a rule of thumb, uh, primary key should stay small. Uh, and there should, uh, there can be only one primary key. So, uh, in most cases, it's enough. But if you really need to query your data in two different ways, for instance, um, if you are an ad-serving platform and you have um, like sites where you display your ads uh, and your clients who buy your ads, that's kind of two different. Uh, dimensions that you should uh, filter by. Then um, you can try creating two tables with the same data but different primary keys. So it, it's a first uh, question. A second question is about partitioning by date. Uh, so as a rule of thumb, uh, uh, there shouldn't be many partitions. Like if you have more than 1,000, it will affect performance negatively for queries that um, query all 1,000 partitions. So for instance, if you partition by day, and you have data for three years, like you will have 1,000 partitions, and you will have to query uh, from each partition. And each query for a partition will be an additional disk seek and it will add latency. So uh, it can uh, negatively impact latency. But if you query for just one day, uh, and then there will be no difference. In even, it will, will even be better if you query for just one day. And for partitioning by month, you will need to read more data than if you're partitioning by day. So it depends on your queries. So out of memory typically um, appears uh, when you have a big aggregation so with a lot of keys. And uh, one of ways to uh, combat it is to enable external aggregation. So it will, the query will be a little bit slower, like two or three times, but it will, not, it will use much less memory. 一般你遇到问题都是做aggregation和不是想要好多好多点这样子的尽量去在其中选择部分的也或者你在很多一些想法为什么你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你们你
I should look at your data. Uh, <laughs> it's difficult to answer in the abstract, but uh, uh, merging process, um, if you have uh, really big parts, merging process will wait before there is a lot of big parts, before it will merge them. So um, you can um, look into your table and see that there is like, 15 parts and they are not merged and you are like why are they not merged because uh, merging is not uh, cheap like essentially you rewrite your data again and again uh, so uh, there is a lot of heuristics uh, in merging selector uh, that will try to reduce the number of this rewrites of data uh, and this can mean that it will delay the merges of the big parts uh, for some time, and may maybe that's what that's what you experience. Okay, thank you. Okay, that. Because after, because there is another index session. Until the end, we can have some questions. Uh, next, there are three. One is Xilang, one is Chinese Telecom, and one is Splunk. Then, after, we will have some questions for the middle. 来再去讲一下我们的 Greenhouse的未来的马上要发布的Roadmap和马上要支持的一些feature 那个大家认识我吗？我这个PPT一百二十二页，再次登录一下。我不知道有没有人看过啊？那个要是看过的话，就再复习一下；要是没看过的话，我们就看一下。然后我们换个口味，刚才都是英文的，然后我们来一个中
个分析师需要什么样的一个工具啊？可能大家首先会想到的是 Excel， 应该大家都会用，对吧？我们写这个论文的时候都会出一些图啊、数据啊、报表啊，都会用这个 Excel。但是这个东西并不能够满足我们的需求，我们动不动就是几千、几万、几亿的这种数据量啊。所以说这个东西，你也就给领导写个 PPT 的时候，可能大部分情况也不用。那么另一个主要的、主要主流的一个选择就是这个 Hadoop。海度海度的这个生态系统，包括这种 Spark 呀、啊、Hive 啊，这整个这一套。然后呢，一个典型的架构，大部分的公司应该都是数据到 Kafka， 或到 ES， 或到 HDFS， HDFS， 然后拿这个 Spark 做存储 ，Hive 做这个呃 Data Warehouse， 然后把一些成型的数据放到这个 MySQL 里。大部分的场景都应该是这个这个样子。但是呢，我不知道大家有没有一个问题，就是海度这个东西，大家觉不觉得它非常浪费资源？啊，就是你，你经常会向领导申请机器啊，你还都可能用烂了，用不够了。啊，网上有个有有一个那个笑话，就是说有的业务，有的公司的业务涨了一倍，但是海度的机器翻了十倍。啊，另外一个原因就是说海度这个东西本身的运维性是非常困难的，并不是我们能够开箱即用的这么一种特性，所以说我们需要讨论一个新的东西。那么我们说到海度啊，就不得不提一些新的东西，就像。海度这个东西，它很的很强大。呃 ，Google 眼里面的海度就像这个航空母舰一样，但是大部分人的需求呢，就像这个图一样，就是啊，你是用了一个航空母舰来拉了一个面包，你的需求可能真的不需要几百台的海度来做。那么这个东西太重了啊，足。那么我们到底需要什么样的一个东西呢？我们的需求是什么呢？第一要快。我们为什么说海度不好用啊？并不是说它不好，而是说它。比如说比较慢，对吧？大家都受不了。第二要好用，我不知道大家有多少人用 ES， 对 ES 的这个查询是不是觉得哎呀好变态啊，好难用啊，有这种同感吗？第三就是说，呃，还是举 ES 的这个例子啊 ，ES 的磁盘经常会达到瓶颈 ，CPU 也经常达到瓶颈，你永远要加机器加芯片，否则你就要删除。这这三点是我们需要看重的。除了这三点呢，还有一个就是要好维护。如果现在，比如说领导交给你的一个任务，说你要把这个一百台的海度规模给我维护好，你要照顾 HDFS， 又要照顾 ZK， 又要照顾 Hive， 又要搞 Spark， 我估计你可能就要离职了，对吧？这个很难搞。那么我们的另一些另一些需求是什么呢？我们处理的数据其实是百分之九十九都是结构化的，其他的就是 data 啊。然后呢，我们的这个我们要做的事情呢，就是对这个 structured data 做一些 filter 和 group by。大部分的所谓大数据其实就是在出报表，对吧？这是事实啊。那么我们真正需要的是什么东西呢？我们需要的是 server。我们不光是要 server， 我们需要的是 fast server， 而且是 fast complex server。这是我们最终想要的这么一个东西啊。与啊，有句话是这么讲的：没有什么数据是一个 server 解决不了的。如果有啊，那就两个。呃，然后，然后呢，我们就讲到了，就说啊，这个图就来自于我们的苏联专家啊。呃，刚才在那、这个专家已经给我们讲过了，什么劣势存储啊，这个 PB 级别啊，这个跨域空间啊，我就不再重复了，我就直接跳过了。然后我们来看一下吧，因为我们这个 PPT 是一个比较，呃，从零到一的，就是面对所有的人，所以会比较初级一点。但是这个东西呢，它不支持事物啊，也不支持这种 update 和 delete 啊，但是呢，它 very fast， 叫这个这个 fucking fast， 对吧？哈哈哈哈哈。就是。它的这个容量 capacity 是 very very big， 对吧？所以这个这两点才是我们最看重的地方。呃，我们来看一下，因为这个 PPT 比较初级啊，部署。呃，接下来我们会从单机到 cluster 到那个一个 strong cloud 的一个强健的一个集群，这三步是怎么走的？我们来看一下。这个东西很好用啊，因为官方提供了这个 Docker 的这个 image， 然后呢，默认是在乌班图上安装的。右边这个 A 这个技术图大家可以看到，它这个使用啊。非常像这个马斯克，因为我本来是做这个马斯克出身的，所以说在我的这个选择中，我就会偏向于哪些东西可能对业务或者对这个维护者更加的友好。那么这个使用上，首先你就没有任何的这个学习梯度，它就像马斯克一样，什么很多很多语法也都非常像。然后我们来看一下它的这个这个性能啊，这个非常的 super。然后我们来做一下压测，对吧？刚才大家光听这个苏联专家说很好很好，我们我们自己测过，这个是那个呃美国的航空的那个数据，呃，裸数据是六十三 G B， 有这个一点六亿行数据。我们来做一个压测啊，压缩这个数据插入到零号子以后是一百七十三兆，啊
呃，插入的速度是九点三万每秒的那个插入速度，压缩率是五倍。然后我们做一个并发压测的话，当机器负载基本上全满的情况下，我们可以达到五十万的可变压缩。五十万是。性整个响应时间还是非常 OK 的。然后我们来看一些简单的差距，呃，不知道大家看到我这个贴纸怎么样？这是刚刚那个呃杨大夫送的。然后这里面有几个非常重要的东西，我已经框出来了。第一个是时间，这个大家都可能很好理解。第二个是最后那个多少 GB 每秒，这是它扫磁盘数据的一个速度。中间那个就是它处理的一个行数。大家可以看到它这个性能还是非常非常猛的。我们找几个复杂的差距看一下。这几个是比较简单的这种。简单的步骤外，大家百分百可能都会用到。一点六亿条数据，一点一秒，好，这在马赛道上可以不用想的。我估计在 E S 里面也应该是搞不定的。我们看一些比较复杂的，这些所有都来自于官方的 demo。啊，我们看一下，这个也是一点多秒，这是单机情况下的。然后我们要介绍一下它为什么会这么快。啊，刚才这个我们的 developer 们提到了很多关于这个 merge tree 的这个东西，在他们的官方文档里面，他们强调了 merge tree 引擎。是他们 most advanced 的 engine， 是他们最最优秀的这么一个引擎，所以我们基本上只调研这个引擎，其他的也没怎么做。这个引擎要怎么用呢？啊，这个我就放在这儿，大家就去细研究就行了，我就不再说了。然后我们讨论一下它为什么会这么快。呃，刚才最开始有一个同、呃、有一个同学问到了，就是他们对这个 LSM 去做了哪些改造？呃，据据我所了解的话，它有这么一些不同。首先就是说，它没有这个 memory table， 它的数据是直接落磁盘的。所以这个性能是比较快的。第二就是说，它我们刚才强调了很多关于这个主件的这个东西，这个主件是用来做一些排序的，而且官方文档里面强强调了很多，我们要做这种 batch 色的，不要做单行的这种色的，这也是跟这个非常相关的。另外就是说，它这个 merge 操作跟你的写入操作是完全一模的。比如我有十个银色的，这十个银色的落地以后，它就不管了，后台有一个异步的程序去把这些东西按照我的 partition 去 merge。最最早的话，我们用的时候还是只能到 month 级别、月级别，现在的话是已经可以到费级别了、天级别了。然后它的这个读呢，为什么会这么快呢？呃，用过买色道的人的话，大大大家都知道，它这个买色道用的是这个这个 balance tree 递数去做这个色性的，但是它这个地方呢，并没有做这么复杂的索引设计，它只用了这个析出索引啊。然后我们来看一下它是怎么做到的。呃，关于这个这个图呢，也是我费了好大的心思想的，这个构建的这么一个例子啊，就是，假如我们的表有三列 x y z， 我们把 x y 作为 primary k， 那么它我们刚才说它主件是用来做排序的，那么它的一个实际情况就是说，我先按 x 排序，再按 y 排序，就是这么一个顺序排来的。大家可以看到，我的 y 的顺序就会出现 a a b， 然后可能 a 又会在这里出现，所以说这个地方的设计是影响你查询性能的一个非常关键的一个地方。刚才就是在这个 developer 的这个 PPT 里面也提到了这个这几个文件啊，在左边这个图里面大家可以看到这个，格林豪斯里面只有几个文件，第一个文件就是这个 primary k 最下面的这个 primary k， 然后第二第二个就是它的这个真正数据存储的这个文件 bin 文件，然后还有就是 mrk 文件。那么这三个文件是怎么来共同协作帮我们做这个数据查找的呢？我们来看一下，我们看几个例子。我们先解释一下这几个里面存的都是什么东西啊？这个并文件就是真正存的这个数值 data， 因为它是列式存储的，所以说它会所有的列、所有的列、所有的字段都会有一个并文件，数据就是真的存在这个文件里面的。那么我们要做的就是说把真正并文件里面的数据给提取出来。那么这个怎么做呢？就要依赖我们的 m r m r k 文件。m r k 里面是什么呢？它存的是 block 和我的真正的 offset 在。这个这个数据文件在磁盘里的 offset 的一个对应关系，那么我的 block 是干嘛用的？我怎么找到我的 block 呢？那么就是依赖我的主件。我们都知道，刚才那个表的引擎里面有个八幺九二，就是默认它的这个这个区分度，就是八幺九二它的重要就是区分度啊，不不不是，颗粒度颗粒度，它这个颗粒度就是八幺九二。说白了什么意思呢？我有一个绳子，我每隔一米打一个绳结，每隔一米打一个绳结，然后这个绳子呢本身还是有序的，我上面写到写个一到一百万。那么我想查一个东西，我除一下那个每间隔的那个绳结，我大概就知道我要查的这个数据大概在哪个绳结上面，对吧？那么这个绳结其实就是这个颗粒度。那么放在这儿来讲，比如说我们的颗粒度是三，那么我就会知道哦，这三这三条数据在一个 block 里面。
这三条再一个，这三条再一个，这三条再一个。每这些数据的 block 映射关系有了以后，如果我要查三，那么我查 x 等于三 ，y 等于 b， 那么我只需要找 block 二和 block 三。但是这个地方它只是一个稀疏索引，稀疏索引本身就不是一个一 v 一的这么一个关系，就是。比如说，你们今天来这个地方，你们首先找到中关村，然后找到什么中关村地铁站，再找到这个楼，再找到这个楼的屋子里面，最终坐到你的位置里面。你坐到你的位置就是一个一对一的关系。但是你找到这个楼的时候，你并不知道这个楼里面的哪个屋子，你还要便利一下。这个过程就是一个稀疏索引的查找过程。那么，克雷浩德是怎么做查询的？他通过组件，哦，我扫一下，我知道我需要，哦，刚才有一个地方忘忘说了，就我们刚才提到那个绳结那个概念，其实就是。我把我每个 partition 的这个这个前面的这个数存下来，放到内存里面。然后呢，因为它是有序的，那么我在查询的时候就一定是一一三，说明这个地方就一定不会有一了。我如果查一个条件为 x 等于一的，那么它就一定是落在第一和二这两个 block 里面。那么我通过这个对应关系，我就能够找到所有的，比如说 x 字段对应的这个 b 文件，它的 m r k 文件里面的这个 block ID 和它的便宜量。所有的列都是这个样子，然后我们来看一下，就是啊，刚才大部分都说清楚了，就是我们的查询为什么这么快呢？原因就在于它用了稀疏索引。为什么它能够支持那么大的数据量，同时又不需要那么多的 memory 呢？因为它做了一个稀疏索引。你可以想想，你的数据已经被缩小了八千一百二十九倍，那是一个什么样的一个量级啊？那么它的一个查询过程就是倒着过来，从我的查询条件，我要定位知道我在绳子的哪一节。我通过知道绳子哪一节，我就知道哪哪个 block， 我再去 m r k 文件里面把这个偏移量拿出来，再把数据读出来，再到内存里面做过滤 ，OK， 就是这个样子的。因为它是一个劣质存储，所以说每个条件都可以并行执行，这又加快了它的查询效率。大概就是这么一个。呃，这里面就是有一些例子，大家就回去看就行了。就是讨论的几种情况，第一种情况就是 for primary k， 就是所有的。外要条件都映射到了这个 primary k 上，就是比如说我们现在的 primary k 是 x 和 y， 然后我们的查询条件是 x 和 y， 那么这时候它就可以全部用到我存在内存里面的 e a e b 三 b 五 a 这些数据。那么第二种情况就是我只用到了主线的一半一部分啊，这这里也分两种情况，第一种情况就是我只只是 x， 第二种情况是我只有 y， 或者我还有个主线 z， 假如说我的主线是 x y z 的话，那么。就是如果是我的查询条件是 y 和 z 的话，查询性能会会略于 x， 啊，但是它要强于全面扫描。这里我就不去细讲了。这里边，呃，还有两种情况：第一种情况是完全没有主件，就是你没有用到任何的索引；第二种情况呢，就是用到了一部分组件和其他字段，啊，这些情况就大家回去看就行了，不清楚可以再问我。这是四种情况。然后关于这个 primary k 的设计呢，就是。我们其实也是有一些疑问的，并不是搞得特别清楚。但是我们的建议大概是这个样子：首先，你必须有一个 data 字段。呃，之前很多人在微信群里面问说，哎呀，这个查的怎么这么慢？啊，我们都会说，你是不是把全表都查了？全表，当你几十亿的时候，肯定也会慢。所以我们内部设使用的话，必须有一个 data 字段，有一个 hour 字段和一个呃其他的字段，然后这三个字段做一个索引。啊，然后我们查询的时候是呃必须使用 data 等于什么这么一个条件的。这样的话，我们每天最大的表可能是六十亿左右，然后这样的话，整个性能还是可以接受。呃，我们刚才讲了很多这个单点啊、单机的性能的啊，多么牛逼，对吧？当然都实话了。但是这个东西你还不能够上线，因为你还缺乏两个东西。第一个东西就是说，我怎么能够让我的那个性能 （performance） 能够一个 l a n d a r i s scalability， 对吧？一个扩展性、线性的扩展性，我不能单机啊就就就到头了，对吧？我们原来就跑一个节点，然后很快，它的磁盘达到了瓶颈，它的查询性能也达到了瓶颈。然后呢，我们就开始去想怎么能够做一个很好的 scale 的这么一个事情啊。然后我们来讨论一下这个扩展性。呃，这个大家应该刚才都已经听到了，就是所其实这个东西就是它的一个 distributed 的这个 engine 啊，它依赖于这个 config 文件来做的这么一个东西。在我们原来的一个 m o d u l tree 的这个基础上，加了一个 distributed 的这么一个 engine。上下表结构字段是一样的，只不过是底下的这个东西，呃，底下的这个具体的这个配这个 engine 的参数 parameter 不太一样、啊。然后刚才我们的这个 developer 也讲了，就是你这个 distributed engine 本身它就是一个 view， 它不做任何数据存储。啊。然后。
然后呢，他这个做查询的时候是帮你做了一个类似于中间件的这么一个东西，他的呃大概就是依赖于这么一种配置文件来达到彼此集群相互失效的这么一种情况，啊不清楚的话大家可以点开去看，在我们最早的这个集群配置里面就已经用四台机器来做这么一个 cluster， 然后我们来看一下它是怎么做的，刚才这个 PPT 里面其实也有。我们刚才说了这个上面这个表是 distributed distributed engine， 下面就是那个 monitor engine， 就是 local table， 这个叫 distributed table。然后我们怎么用呢？就是这里边也有一些坑嘛，就是大家不要去写这个 distributed table。虽然它会帮你把这个你的写入给转发到其他节点，但是我们还是建议大家直接写这个本地节点。我们是用这个 domain 这个域名来做了一个 load balance， 呃，这样的话。你指定写 local 表，这样的话，你写哪个节点就一定是哪个节点，因为我们用的好多都是这个 ran r a n d 的这种方式 r a n d 的这种方式。如果你写这个分布式表的话，会导致你明明写的一，但是他又把请求转到其他地方，这样就不利于我们的 load balance。当我们做这个 read read 操作的时候，这时候你就随便查，但是一定是查这个分布式表。然后呢，他会把这个请求转发到其他节点，同时汇总完以后把这个结果返回给我们。这也是我们那个 c l i c k h o u s e 能够做到线性增长的一个原因，因为你每增加一个 shard， 你的性能都会增加 n 分之一。那天不是群里面发了个笑话吗？说如果一个节点是两秒，两个节点就是一秒，一百台机器，那你的性能就是网络传输的时间啊，是吧？呃，然后总结一下的话，就是说这个东西怎么去用，这个我们就不细说了。呃，然后它这个扩展性是非常非常好的，你加资源就能够达到一个很好的。扩展性能，然后另外一个问题就是说，我就是一个特性吧，就是这个 config 文件你加增加进去无需重启无需 reload， 它就可以自动识别，这也是一个非常好的一个地方。呃，有几个注意的地方，就是刚才提到了一个就是呃分布式表会造成不均匀的这个问题，你就不要去写这个分布式表，写的话你可以写本地表。第二个问题就是说，呃我们在这个配置文件里面用了这个 domain， 这里面用的是 domain， 但这个 domain 只有在 Clearhouse start 的时候才会去做一次解析，然后中间比如说我的域名有了一个变更，它是不会去做到感知的。我们我们一开始想用这个域名的方式，就是为了后期切换的方便，啊，结果发现这个东西并不方便。后来我在那个 Google Group, Google Group 上看到他们也有人提出这个问题、啊，我记得官方的回复就是说一台一台去处理，把这个配置下掉再上去，啊，采取这样的方式去解决。嗯、呃，然后。然后呢？然后还有一个问题就是说，我们比如说我们搭了十十个节点的机群，然后呢，有的业务呢，我只想让它用五个节点，这个做不到，因为这个配置文件是在全局所有，你要不就全用，要不就不用，没法做到我只用其中的部分节点这么一个问题。然后我们刚刚才讲了这么多，就是还是聚聚焦于这个性能啊，其实我们还是缺乏了一个数据可靠性啊。我们刚才提到了，无论你是十个节点还是一百个节点。你的数据都是 n 分之一，像统计一样。那么一旦说你的某个机器挂掉了，你的数据就丢了，这对我们来讲是不可靠的，对吧？特别是做 DBA 的人都比较对数据的安全性有一些强迫症，所以说我们要考虑一下怎么做到这个数据的安全性啊。然后呢，其实就是说白了就是 c l i c k h o u s e 的这个这个 replication 的这个功能。呃，在这个 replication 的功能其实真的困扰了我好久啊，就是原来因为原来做 DBA 的话。呃，我了解到的 replication 就这两种，第一种就是主从复制啊，主库 MySQL 的主库这个把编号给记到本地，然后传到远端，然后再回放一下，啊、apply 一下。第二种的话就是我的一个多组复制，就是多个一个一个从库多个 master 相互复制。但是 c l i c k h o u s e 那个我一直搞不清楚它是怎么去控制这个，就是主从的这个数据一致性的，它也里面也没有任何关于这个呃这个定文件呀、啊、这个点位啊这种设置。直到有一天，我在马桶上想明白了这个问题啊，真的是在马桶上。它的复制是相互复制，它是一个呃 multi master、multi source and 相互的这么一个复制。啊，说白了就是说，这四个节点，我只要有一个节点写入数据，它通过 zk 就可以感知到哦，别别人写进来了，我再把这个数据给拉过来就 OK 了。这里面它的这个复制，刚才上一个 PPT 里面也提到了，它的就是就是那个。数据的一个 part， 那是一个最小的一个单位来做这么一个分布，这就是这就是我们解决数据可靠性的一个思路，就就这么简单。但是这个东西呢，还。
它是一个呃最终一致性，并不是一个像我们开二次那种这个多如开启的这种操作，它是一个最终一致，是一个异步的。也就是说，我在一二三四这四个节点里面写的第一个，并不是马上第二个才马上就会有，也不是说我其他节点拉到数据以后，我的一才会返回这个四，它是一个完全异步的。那么它是怎么实现呢？其实还是引擎，一切都是引擎。我们刚才提到了两个 merge tree、stream builder， 还有接下来这个就是 replicated merge tree， 就是在 merge tree 的基础上引入 zk 做了这么一个复制的引擎。呃，这个这个东西呢，其实好多人也很困扰啊，就是不知道该怎么用。大家可以看一下，就是首先它有一个 zk 的路径，啊，就是这里面关于怎么设计，可以参考一下官方的 document。然后呢，第二个呢，就是你的这个 t u p l 的名字。你可以跟你的机器名保持一致，我们就是机器名保持一致。第三个的话，后面就跟那个 merge tree 引擎一样，只要你前面的这个呃 z o o k e e p e r 的 pass 保持一致，那么数据就会相互同步。那么我们一个最佳的一个架构是什么样子的？啊，我们原来很痛苦，就是不知道该怎么用。官方文档在这方面介绍的也比较少。后来我们经过我们的这个琢磨，就搞出了这么一个 architecture。我们怎么去用呢？我们我们搞这个数据无非就两点，我们都已经讲了。第一，我要快，那么我加机器就 OK 了。怎么加呢？纵向的加，啊不，拿纵向去加，因为三个相当于是三个下的，我各占三分之一，我三个不够变四十四，变五。那么当我变成五零的时候，每个还是各占五分之一，数据还是会有输入的风险。那怎么做呢？每个的每个给它来一个副本啊。我这里面只是假设，假如我有三个 IDC， 那么数据就会在 IDC 一二三各有一份。因为中间是通过 zk 来复制的，所以它的数据是，呃，只要你不会是，就是说，这个世界末日的三个 IDC 全挂了，否则你数据是不会有的。这就是我们常说的这个，呃，灾备对吧？跨 IDC 灾灾备。那么这种架构下，你任何三个 IDC 挂掉两个是不影响的。然后呢，它这个，假如说我 IDC 二和三挂掉了，然后我重新把这个表给起来。它通过 zk 的这个原数据是重新会把我的数据给拉过来，所以这个地方大家就完全不用关心这个复制它是怎么去 apply 的这么一个过程。啊，另外，假如说我其中某个节点挂了，比如说我日常以 IDC 一作为这个 online 的这么一个 production 的这么一个使用，然后呢，我的读写都可以走在最左边这一这一这一个 class 的这边。然后呢，假如说我 A 节点挂掉了，挂掉也分两种，一种是不可恢复的，比如说我次栏挂。第二种就是说我短暂了，比如说我异常宕机了，那么我可以很快通过域名啊，通过其他方式把我的请求切到其他的这个这个 class 里面，然后等我这个 A， 如果是那种短暂的恢复，呃短暂的故障把它恢复，数据会同步增量。如果我 A 完全不可恢复，我增加一个新的节点，那么它就同步全量的数据，就 OK 了。所以这个是非常的弹性化。我们线上有过一次测试，就是有一次比较严重的故障，就是单表一百个 G。还是几百个 G， 同步了五个小时，就 OK 了。这是真实的一个案例。那么我们来看一下这个集群到底有多快啊？就是，呃，在我们之前，我们用的是这样的配置，很差，就是那个海杜甫的淘汰吧，好多年前的这种机型啊。呃，我们来看一下，这是一个当时是三百亿，三百亿就是，然后零点九秒做抗星。然后这是那个，就是刚才那三百亿数据做了一个 group by date， 啊 ，group by date， 呃，这个大概用了就是 ten seconds 啊，这么一个情况，啊，就全量数据做一个，我们看到是十 G 域秒，这个还是比较老的那个集群啊。然后我们来看一个比较复杂的 circle， 我们第一开始讲，我们需要一个 circle fast circle complex fast circle， 啊，这就是我们的一个目标。这就是我们现在的业务的思路，啊，就是这个。啊，这有消息吗？啊，这有消息吗？看不太清。啊，也不需要看这个，你知不知道他们不看这个？哎，有转，这里面有转，它是我们内部的一个 ADM 的一个数据，就是我们想看哪些区域会长期比较慢什么的。然后这是那个来自官方的一个 demo， 他们是一百多 GB， 啊，大概就是这么一个飞率，对吧？去细讲，然后这也是官方的压缩数据，今年也是不讲，因为大家都很清楚的，是绿的对吧？红的秒杀，啊，就是一个字儿啊，快快快，啊，就是
这不是小米的广告啊，这是这不是小米的广告。Why so fast？ 对吧？然后第一个情况就是，第一个我们要不得不说的就是这个严格的代码编写，他们在官方文档里面最下边写的非常详细，我们的编码的原则 （principle to code）。然后他们做了很严格的这种单元测试，简单的 test <咳>。然后呢，他们用了很多这种 vector vector 的这种这个向量化的这种处理。啊，这个我理解的也不是很到位啊。呃，我理解的话就是一种简单的处理方式，然后批量的去映射到大量的数据里面。举一个例子，就是说 Python 底下有一个 map 的函数，我可以对一个列表批量的去做处理，就是说白了就是一个批量化。啊，然后另外就是。其实这个 vector 跟这个 sim 的这个基本上是类似的，它就是一种数据处理的方式啊。我们很多人都会觉得，我全描扫是不是很慢呀、啊？呃，之前在群里面那个有一个谁来着？那个说就是当我的数据量达到一个什么样的程度的时候，是有这个测试数据的。有的这种全描扫就会超过我的这种索引的差异性效率啊，这是 click cost。我不我我这人对表回头可以让他求证一下啊。这是这是他用到的几个。四点呢，就是说我们是一个劣势存储，呃，我们都知道这个，我们一开始提到这个函数可能只有增加机器、增加机器、增加机器，然后呢，我通过把我的这个数据 map 到不同的机器上，我的性能才会有提高，也就是说我的性能是依赖于我的并发程度的。那么我们的 Clean House 呢，它用了这个劣势存储，我每一列都是一个可以同时去操作，然后呢，我查询条件呢可能同时。覆盖了 A、B、C 三个列，那么这三个列同时是可以同时工作的。同时呢，它内部每个列的操作又用到了这种 vector engine 的这种计算方式，说呃，它是在并行的方式上又做了并行，所以说它才会这么快。啊，大家如果用过的话，就会发现它这个 CPU 定律，呃，是可以进行用满的。我们现在是四十核的机器，基本上都可以达到。这是一个 MPP。Vector vector processing 呢，这个可以大家可以参照这两个文章，好，我就不说。另外就是说，我们这个这个方便使用啊，它提供了很多方式，这个非常有有用，我们来看看。比如说这种呃，框状解决的统计类的，比如说我要算百分之九十九，百分之九十九显示时间，一个九、两个九、三个九这种数据，然后中位数，还有这种这个标准差、方差都可以做，还有这种 URL 的这种 count， 还有这种。呃 ，IP 啊这种节选，我举几个例子。呃，比如说我们做一个 URL， 呃，大部分人可能会做这种域名的这种黄统计，就是我想知道我这个这个 HTTPS 请求有多少，我想知道我的 HTTP 请求有多少，我想知道我的这个后面的这个呃不同的接口请求有多少。我们可能有时候会做这种参数的截取，有时候要按这个杠截啊，有时候按这个问号去截，用不同的方式截取。我们以前可能就是拿这个数据要做一个 EDL， 把这个截出来，对吧？全程原始数据。啊，现在不用了，一个方式就 OK 了。再举个例子 ，IP 的这么一个方式，就是我们可以直接把这个 IP 归到 C 段。当然，这个需求可能比较少。这一个例子，就是我们线上某一个业务，哪些 IP 段访问比较多？这个非常重要，这个也是我们内部现在在做的一个全局、全局性能追踪的这么一个东西。我们把后端的所有的这种请求、后端资源，无论是 MySQL 啊、Mongo 啊、Redis 啊、MC 啊。全部记下来还是接口类的？那么我想知道它的百分之九十九显示时间是多少？一个 circle 就 OK 了。比如说这里我们买 circle 的显示时间，一个九就是一点五毫秒，两个九就变成三十七毫秒，三个九就变成六百毫秒，就完全非常方便啊！这也是我们选这个选选这么选 c l e a n h o u s e 的一个原因。呃，问题 question 啊，第一个就是好像是只支持单引号，这个我不知道为什么是这样啊，这个比较。比较比较怪异啊。第二个就是这个 server mode 好像比较严格，就是我如果插入，我定义的是一个 int， 然后我插入的是一个 string， 就报错了，就不让我插入，这个也是比较痛苦。特别是我们在做大量数据插入的时候，我们很难定位到底脏数据是在哪，因为我们都是做了两千条、两千条的插入，中间有一个字段它写错了，比如说应该是个一，它写了一个，然后这两千条都插入失败了，我还得去一条一条定位，这个非常麻烦。我建议就是能不能把这个做一个不严格，比如说。如果它不是一个 int， 我这个插一个默认值什么的。啊，这个第三个已经不是问题了，这是很早的 GPT 了，这是分区的那个问题。啊，第四个问题不说。呃，然后这个就简单过吧，就是谁在用，一个是 y a n d e x m e t r i c 然后这是他们的规模，我也就不说了，这也就是它 PB 级的一个来源。
Y click on is PB level， 然后其他的欧洲原子能机构 Cloud Flare， 然后俄罗斯的那个那个互联网金融，然后中间要提一下这个 Cloud Flare， 它他们有一个文章就是 How they analyze one hundred one million DNS queries per second， 啊，这篇文章写的非常好，就是他们从他们的选型，他们也是原来选了 ES 啊，选了这个 Spark 啊，都不好使，最后放放到这儿。然后呢，为了更好的去把这个数据做展示，他们也做了这个可视化的需求。然后他们对这个，呃、我们也在用，就是 Airbnb 开源了一个 Python 的项目 SuperSet。SuperSet 原来是不支持这个 c l e a r h o u s e 的，因为它没有这个 Python 的驱动。然后 Cloudflare 开发了一个这个 Python 的驱动，啊，这个也是他们做的比较好的一个。另外，在 Grafana 上面的支持，也是他们贡献的代码。另外的话就是像那个 Infinite Data， 这是国外的做存储的公司，他们也贡献了一个这个驱动啊，当然这个驱动不建议大家用，后面会详细的去讲。像英伟达呀、啊，他们也在用这个可视化，这就不说了。啊 ，Tenant 刚才我们的这个呃俄罗斯专家啊，这是他们的是一个商业公司，我就不细说了。然后这里面推荐一下他们的这个 blog， 这写的非常好啊，我基本上全部都读过，也翻译了一些呃文章从、呃、那个到中文。然后他们前两天刚刚开有一个 MySQL to 这个 Clearhouse 的这个工具，做到一个 real time 的这个数据支持，但是只是 inset 啊，这个已经。然后呢，他们其实也在做这个云上的服务，已经把这个 Clearhouse 投到一个 into 的 cloud。嗯、呃，另外呃，另外如果大家做 DB 的话，可能会知道有一个公司叫 Pocona， Pocona 做了一个东西叫 PMM， Pocona Monitor Management。就是做做到三分钟内让你把你的 MySQL 做一个很很好看而且很有效的一个可视化监控，它们里面有一个功能叫做这个 QAN Query a n a l y z e 这么一个东西，就是我想知道我所有的 MySQL 的查询是什么样情况的。他们原来就是存在 MySQL 里面的，很慢，他们也是计划把这个东西迁到这个可视化。下面这个例子是现在很火的这种区块链，呃，这个也是不是蹭热度啊，他们就是在用这个东西 ，Blockchain。呃，国内的话，像刚才这个我们立关，就是我不是我们立关，他们立关。他们立关。那个欧阳晨就是来自于那个有朋友，但是他们好像没怎么用。啊 ，One A P M， 还有这个，还有这个这个其他公司呢，我了解到的，他们就是做这个风力发电那个发电机做监控的啊，这么一个案例。呃，这个是之前的那个视频，就是就已经已经更新了啊，就是 p r o c e s s Circle 在 MySQL。是一个非常优秀的 middleware 啊，中间件，然后它也已经把这个 c l e a r h o u s e 作为一个就是封装了。你可以用 MySQL 写，比如说你 Python 的 MySQL DB 来访问 c l e a r h o u s e 但是还是很还是很有局限性的，它还是只是做了比较简单的支持。然后右边这个左这个左边这个架构啊，它已经完全支持了，之前是没有这个底下这个冰浪的同步的，现在已经 OK 了，但是还是说只支持到 Insert 这个技术啊。呃。这个也是我们前两天就是刚刚跟进的一个东西啊，因为我们刚才提到了我们要做这个 AI Ops，AI Ops 就离不开这个云端应用。前两天这个 c l e a r h o u s e 刚刚发布了一个新的版本，呃 y o u n d e x 发布了他们基于这个 GPT 算法的这个 Catbox 的这个库，然后 c l e a r h o u s e 可以把这个库引用过来，直接通过 Circle 来做这个机器学习，啊，就是又验证了我们那个说法啊，没有什么是一个 Circle 完成完不成的啊，如果有就两个。机器学习也可以应用，但是现在应该还是在这个试水阶段。这个也是我们非常看好的一个一个新的飞选。啊，刚才谈了很多啊，还已经三十五分钟了，我尽快了。我们怎么用啊？这是我们现在内部的一个架构，我们其实根本没有那么大的规模，因为八代机器就够了啊。然后我们来看一下我们怎么用的。刚才我们说了有四台是低配，大家可以看到就是上面这四台。它的配置非常低，内存四十八个 G， 二点零 G 赫兹，开完超线程才二十四个核。呃，然后呢，我们只拿它做备份。我们刚才提到了，就是要做这个复制引擎，对吧？那么它就只做一个备份，几乎不做插件。会有一些比较不太重要的业务，我们就不做复制引擎，就丢在那四台上，给他们长久。但是我们线上的话，申请了四台新的机型，配置比较高，二点五 G 的 CPU， 开完超线程以后是四十八核，一百二十八 G 内存，然后。单机是四十 T 左右，四台就是一百六十 T， 然后主要的插群 ，online 的插群都在底下这个上面去做一个 backup。啊、然后我们的一个
个情况，我们其实呃在业界算是比较久了，我们采用了半年，数据量就已经非常多了。我们最多的一个表是一千九百亿，啊，最大的一个表是二十九个 T， 它已经有这个对多少？应该是百五十亿、八百亿。然后我们每天写的最多的这个表是六十亿每天，啊，我们中间的这个是九十四个列。这也就是劣势存储的一个优势，因为劣可以无限存储。呃，说到这些嘛，就是还有就是我们是怎么用的？刚才提这个已经提到了，我就简单过吧。就是要做可视化，你数据有了，我们解决了这个存储的问题啊，容量不用管了，我查它很快。我们那么我们要做的就是把这个东西变现，变成一个可视化的一个东西啊，这样才非常更加有利于我们去实现这个数据的价值。呃，我们传统的，我们之前有个业务是怎么做呢？我们也是内部的一个 ADM， 我们内部的一条数据链呢，就是上面这个链路，很长啊，就是传统记得大家怎么看？扛不打到 EDFS， 然后到 Spark， 到 Hive， 到 MySQL， 到报表，这里面有几个问题呢？第一个就是说，数据链路太长了，中间如果比如说我 Spark 任务失败了，那我很难去控制这个东西，我需要重新调回去，或者说我失败了一部分。那我 Hive 和 MySQL 里面的数据还要去重新清理。第二个就是说，我的这个整个设计模式是需要固定下来的。如果我要做一些极其的差异，比如说某个业务说你帮我查一下什么什么数据，这个数据并不在之前的这个报表里面，我是很难做到这种交互性的差异。这是我们面临的最大的一个问题。然后我们用这个可调组合的架构就变成这样：我们把数据做 ETL 解析完了以后，扔到可调组合 ，OK 没了，链路就这么简单。可调子就作为我们最终的一个 data warehouse 怎么来用？然后呢，我们有几条链路，第一条链路就是一些固定的这种 API， 我们把数据提取出来，或者用这种今天我们听那个他们讲的比较好的，可以用一些物化视图。另外就是我们直接 super set 对接可调子把数据查出来，出图，或者是 graphing。呃，我们这个项目大概就是变成了这么一种架构，就是 k a f k a 到可调子 k a f k a 出 ES。因为当时我们并不清楚可调子能否胜任这个工作，所以我们采取了两条线，就是 ES 和 u c o n t 也在做，啊，但是现在基本上可以替换。这个特点很明显，就是链路短，及时的、实时的查看，然后呢，数据变现非常快。呃，可以看一些，可以看一些案例，这是我们内部的一个 APP， 我们想知道它的一个显示时间，我们就给它封了，比如说 iOS 呀、啊，运营商啊，然后那个那个各种维度。省事啊什么的，这个展示效果会非常好。然后各种各种图，这就是那个 Super Set 的一个优势。呃，我们内部现在的话，大概主要是这么一种架构，就是 c l e a n h o u s e 是这个非常大的 Warehouse， 然后呢 m a s t e r b o 是一个比较小的，我们作为一种，比如说大家不知道刚刚最近这一个月有没有在给领导出年度的报表？当你们出年度报表的时候，会不会很痛苦？说，哎呀，老张这数据多存点就好。我不知道大家有没有这样的困惑。呃，以以前我们好多都是拿这个 MySQL 存，哎，存着存着就删了，然后到年底用的时候发现我操没数据。现在你不用不用操心了 ，Mys 所有数据都扔到可调，这个数据量这个我们后续会探讨一下。然后呢，你把你一些比较关键的指标，比如你每天要提取出来这个。某个指标的频率显示时间，或者什么每天的这种 QPS 关键指标，到年底你需要拿给领导做 PPT 用的，就放到 MySQL 里面。因为在我们的体系里面，我们认为 MySQL 是一个不会挂的，因为有 DBA 帮你去做这个 Backup 呀、啊，做做这种 HA 啊，所以你认为它这个不会挂，不会挂的。但是它这个数据量不会很大，主要是这么一个情况。然后大部分用 Clean 的人都会困难到哪呢？他不知道他不知道数据怎么过来，他不知道数据怎么弄过来。我们很多用这个 ELP 架构，为什么为什么大家愿意用啊？因为你用这种 long stage 啊，好好谈啊，你很容易把数据加载到 ES 里面。因为第一，你不需要建 schema； 第二，你不需要关心你的这个，比如说你还要做的这个，你是一个 JSON 的格式啊，你还是一个这个表的格式啊，你完全不用管。但是到 Clean House， 它就是一个关系型制度的，你就得关心这个这个 structure data 这个这个 table structure。哎，好多人就很痛苦，怎么弄？啊，教给大家很简单，要不就是。把数据落成 CSV 文件，定期导入；要不就是
用那个自己去写一个 GDBC 的一个额外的一个脚本，要不就是用我们的开源的工具啊，介绍一下我们开源的工具，这个这个 h a n g 是携程开源的一个类似于 Love Stash 的这么一个东西，但是我们、哦、我们也在用，然后呢，它本身它性能是要比 Love Stash 要强很多的，它它这个东西就是一个 input， 一个 filter， 一个 output，input 肯定大部分都是卡布拉，然后呢那个。filter 可能就是你会做一些不断的截取啊、过滤啊，呃或者 JSON 的这种那个获取啊、get 啊，然后再把 output。而我们是内部开发了一个 output 的一个插件，就是你可以通过 Hangout 的插件直接把这个数据从卡布拉写到 ES。这个我们已经开源了，大家可以去试一下，还是非常方便的。我们也有一个 blog 关于这个东西怎么去用。呃，然后我们的可视化大概就是我们使用上就是第一 g r a p h n a 第二 s u p e r s e t 第三。呃，报表第四，这个 ad hoc 的这种集齐的查询，很多是给给那个数据分析师，他们自己去做这个写一些 server 来做一些数据分析。呃，我们还用到了一些新的功能，就是刚才呃我们的刘老板也提到，就是一个字典功能，非常好用。呃，如果大家做这种可视化的时候，会发现，比如说你用第三的这种库，或者你用 super set 的这种，你要出一个什么 map， 出一个这个中国的地图。它是不识别什么北京啊、天津，它不识别这个，你需要给它写什么 I S I S O 的国际代码。一种方法就是说，你把它做数据清洗的时候就写进去，这显然是浪费，对吧？你很多重复的。第二就是你做一个表的卷，性能不好。那么做字典就是一个非常非常好用的一个功能。啊，这个要感谢这个张健啊，这个也是遇到了很多很多问题，他帮我解决了，就非常好用。你把这个字典放到 MySQL 里面，这里面还有一些，比如说你你的你存的是汇率。会变，那你肯定是不能写到一个表里边，不能也不能做一个 EDL， 你只能把它做一个 map， 编辑中心，这个非常好用。呃，刚才我们提到这个 Python 的模块，也有很多人刚才问，呃，我们也是踩了一个坑啊，我们推荐大家用这个 c l o u d Driver， 在这个 c l o u d 还有几个接口，有这种 Command Line 的，有这个 HTTP 的，还有这个这个 Native TCP 的，它那个 Command Line 的 Command Line 编译行那个，其实就是基于这个 Native TCP 的。然后很多 Python 的库，像比如说 s e r v e a l c h e m y 这个比较通用啊。第二个就是那个 Infinite Data， 就是那个搞存储那公司搞的这个 o r m 的这个，前两个都是基于 Request 的。如果你去大量数据写入，比如说你每次插几千几万条，你会发现非常慢，你根本就来不及插入，你的你的处理延迟会非常大，因为它是基于这个 UDP 接口。底下这个 c l i c k h o u s e Driver， 它是基于 Native TCP 的，性能跟这个 c l i c k h o u s e Client 一样。所以大家，如果你是处理大量数据，就用第三个就 OK 了。呃，说一下我们内部的一些监控，就是我们怎么用的。就是 Cloud 本身提供了基于 Graphite 的这个，就是你可以直接把它的 System 库里面的数据写到 Graphite。我们不爱用这个，我们用的是 Prometheus、Prometheus， 然后 Prometheus、Prometheus 的 Explorer， 它也是一个 System 的一个库，然后把数据放到 Graphite 上面做监控，做了一些，比如说 Query per Second and Insert per second， 我们线上现在是两个机型，所以说达到了十四万每秒的这个数据量，啊，并没有达到我们的一个峰值。然后一些我们的一些经验吧，刚才大那个他们也提到了，多核啊,啊都不用说了，呃，磁盘一定要是这个，这个这个这这就不说了吧，把 Swap 给禁用就行了。然后使用方面有几点，第一点千万不要去做单条 Insert， 或者说几百条 Insert， 一定要是几千几千的 Insert。因为它后后端的这个问题逻辑，你每每一个颜色都会生成一个文件，然后这个文件是 p a t 这个 p a t 在后端 memory。如果你生成的这个每次插太少，嗯 p a t 太多，它就会报错，说你这个 merge 的速度赶不上你写入的速度，就会报错。写这个 local 表，不要写这个独分独分制表。然后 Docker 有两个坑，第一个坑是这个他们默认的这个绑定了 IPv6。很多人都防不了 IPv6 的，所以都会报错。第二个是默认的 Docker 的 time zone， 你会查一些，比如说你在 Graphite 里面，它是把这个，比如说你要查一个时间范围，你是左上角右上角存的时间范围，它是给你转的一个时间戳，你会发现，哎，操，这个时间戳怎么明明数据有，怎么怎么出不来啊？是时区不对，默认是零时区，这也是个坑。千万不要 slap 星，因为劣势分种。如果你查询条件跟你查出来的东西没有关系，那你的会很慢，因为你 I/O 成为偏角。然后没有 decimal， 很多很多有这种商用，就是那个 business 相关的东西，它需要这个
大的整形，呃 d e s i m a l 的这种这种这种数据类型，你呃，你可以把它用一个 u l i n s 作为一个废除关系。然后常见的问题，第一个 QBS 啊，就是很多人问这个这个 QBS 怎么样啊？我问这种问题的都是不怎么专业的啊，因为 Cloud 它是一个 a n a l y z e database， 它并不是一个 OLTP 的这么一个产品，所以说不要不要问这个 QBS 了，你可以理解为它就是一个。因为它可以把所有的资源全拿满，如果你查询多了，那资源就不够用了，大家都满，对吧？是这么一个问题。然后这个以后大家也讨论完，资源隔离怎么做？我们今天上午的一个讨论呢，就是说他们官方用的这个是一个组一个组用的，每个业务就用一个组，然后呢彼此可能就不会有干扰。我们内部的话就是用的比较粗暴一点，就是好多业务都在那个 cluster， 所以是会有影响。第二个问题就是说，我们都前面一直在吹嘛，说这个嫁接链怎么好怎么好。两个变四个，四个变八个，哎，性能越来越好。但是当你发现哪一天你不需要那么多节点了，你很难去 reduce 这个节点。这个他们也好像也没有什么好的办法。你数据迁移会比较困难。然后数据写入我刚才说了 ，Python、GPTC 或者是这个 Hunt。然后第四个问题，怎么做复制？哎呀，好多人老在愁死了。大家可以看一篇博文啊，我说了。然后一次写多少？这个刚才也说了，一次要多写一点。第六个问题，怎么去做这个数据删除？刚才我留了一个问题没有说，我们根本就不删，我们一千八百亿个数据，大家可以想想，那那存了多久啊？而且我们估算了一下，我们那个整个集群大概是一百二三十个 G， 这个数据量就是按我们现有的业务，我们可以撑两年，不删数据可以撑两年，因为它这个东西它不是一个 I O 密集型的啊，也不能这么说啊，查询的时候还是 I O 越好越快。你数据放在那儿，你存完不快就 OK 了，你也不用，你也不用管，所以说你不需要操心这个数据量的问题。好多人问啊，你这个怎么删呀、啊？你不要删了，啊，万一年底领领导咱们要复制，还是那个问题，这个数据很贵的。总结一下，就是没有事务要求，没有 update 的要求，对响应时间有要求，啊，结构化，体量大，需要 SQL、HTTP、API 各种接口，然后需要存日志，需要存。广告啊，广告曝光、啊，我们希望也有业务在做这个广告曝光的这种尝试。物联网啊 ，monitor data， 可调子就像一个，我们都说海洛克大象对吧？我们可调子就是一个能够奔跑的大象。啊、但是啊，这个前方高能啊，对，我们都说可调子很好啊，但实际上它是一个手动挡的车。啊，那就。这个需要就是需要大家，对，需要你比较掌握它比较多一点，你才能把它用好一点。这也就是我们建建议大家多去普通官方文档，多去看我们的一些，多去我们社区看文章提问题。然后，其实我们在做科普调研的时候也做了一些其他选项，就是我简单说吧，已经超时了。呃，对比一下，蓝色宝啊，不用对比了，这个就是秒杀了。然后预处理的我们也有说 ，ES 我们也有说。海豆的这种生态呢，就是我们现在还不能够断言它能不能取代海豆，但是现在的话，我们觉得用的还是非常好的。对比一下 ES， 呃，有用 ES 吗？举个手，都没有啊。好，你们几个人？好，那我就大胆说。<笑> ES 我们刚才说了，它的生态非常丰富啊 ，E E L K 对吧？这个有展示的，有数据写入的，但是呢，这个这个这个社区很好，对吧？但是它搜索太难查了，数据量也很有限，慢慢机器用满了 ，CPU 也不够用了，查起来也很慢。我们有时候查二十四小时就没了，这个查不出来，就查不出来，就就就这些问题，很头疼，对吧？但是 ES 在这方面，哎，首先我解决了你查询的问题，解决了你存储的问题，但是呢，我的数据写入稍微慢，稍微有点问题。但是我们社区慢慢强大以后，这些也不是问题，对吧？然后呢，我们对比一个新的东西啊，我们刚才说数据量。这个这个我们不删，为啥不删呢？我们有理由的。我们线上有一个实际的业务，一亿条数据，用 ES 需要三十三 GB， 用 Clearhouse 需要一点四 GB。然后每一 GB 的数据能够存多少条数据呢 ？ES 只有三百万 ，Clearhouse 有七千万。呃 ，ES Clearhouse 是它的二十三倍，这是真实线上数据。然后呢，我们的 c l o u 呢，在这个社区的爬升呢，也是非常快的啊。这个是那个 DB DBNG 的 ranking 这个网站，非常专业啊。比如说，呃 ，MySQL MySQL DB 和 
PG 级别、PG postgraduate 级别也经常在撕逼啊，一个说我是 most popular， 另一个说我是 most advanced， 啊，他们就经常拿这个数据去 PK。我们可以看到，我们是不如 Green Pump 呀、啊，也不如 ES 呀、啊，但是我们的这个。这个这个加速度很快，呃，其实除了 Clean House 的，我们也有一些其他的竞争对手，并不是 Clean House 就是最牛逼的，啊，还有比它更快的，就是基于显卡的这种东西。这里面就简单过一下吧，就是有一个 MapD 的这么这么一个产品，有一个老外做了一个做了一个测试，呃，又把 Clean House 给秒杀了，但是但是这个东西很贵啊，它是依赖于显卡，所以我们就不要去不多讨论了。但是大家知道有这么个东西，然后也有基于 PG 的这种。GPU 的产品也很快，啊，这个 PPT 其实也是来自于社区啊，就是我们的 c l e a n h o u s 到底在什么一个位置？我们用这种这种 business 的这种产品呢，啊，像这种 Vodka 啊、Redshift 呀，就是很多东西，它很快，但是呢很贵。然后呢，商用的，比如说这种 InnoDB 啊、InnoFrid 呀、Blue Pump 呀、Hadoop 呀，它很免费 ，it's free， 但是这很累，对吧？大家都很累，每天花钱，其实。如果不雇大家的话，可以把这个钱去买商业产品了。我们经常做的是说，如果我们不干了，就可以买 Oracle 了，对吧？然后呢，我们的 Clean House 其实就处在这两种，我们 Blazing Fast， 然后呢，同时我们是 Free， 啊，但是就是我们需要一个了解的过程，因为它是一个手动量的东西。啊，为什么？就是有人问为什么？从哪里了解到的这个 Clean House？ 就是我原来做 UDB 呢，就是我很痛苦啊，就是很多人。拿 m y s e r 做 O L O L O L， 就是复杂的车、复杂的产品跑，全跑到 m y s e r 上。然后呢，你你等等说啊，你想下一个，你又你又没有解决的办法，你或者你告诉你去上 h a 人家说我不想用，你你又没有办法。然后呢，然后呢，我就在一个神奇的网站上还遇到这个东西，就是 f a c o n a 是我们 G B A 的一个非常推崇的这么一个这么一个网站。然后呢，就是大概就是一七年五六月份的时候，他们就是在推这个东西。然后呢。做了一个测试，发现真的很好啊，所以说这么一个过程，大家可以关注一下，就是跟存储啊、买 server 啊、Mongo 啊，这个这方面都可以关注一下。那么问题又来了啊，怕不怕有坑？有没有坑？呃，我们线上用了大概有大半年，然后呢，万玉阳今天跟一个同事也交流了，我们各自 crash 过一次啊，这不是巧合，对我们没有约没有相约 crash。就可呃，但是那但是那次 crash 也没有找到问题，整体上来看，它的性能还是非常 stable 的啊，这是我们我觉得就是可以大家保证的这么一个东西。我觉得从我们的水平来讲，是 OK 的啊。呃，你不试试可能不知道好不好用，是吧？也许你在这几种场景下，你试完以后大概就是啊这么一个感觉啊，这个很嘚瑟，很爽啊。呃，但是呢，还还要再加一个但是。万赛大众的被告，就是不要说今天参加了这个会啊，所有都上个料子。我们现在还没有决定要不要把 ES， 要不要把 h a d o 全部替换掉。我们也不确定这个东西未来会走向什么，但是只是在当下未来的一两年内解决了我们的问题啊。所以大家不要这个这个一棒打死，其他都不能用了，出门就说哎，可料子万岁，就不要用啊，没有信仰就不要用。然后就给大家推荐资料，就是可料子在中国的这个。呃，加我微信要备注啊，好多人加我微信，我不知道是谁，一定要备注你的公司和姓名。然后我没在招人，啊，说姓名。<笑>我们招 D V A， 招运维，招数据分析。呃，我们有一些就是国内的资源比较少，就是很多英文和俄文的。然后很多东西我放到了那个网盘上，这个到时候我会发给大家。然后这里面是我们推荐的比较几个，呃，常见点，啊，就是我们大部分人用的是那个 R P M 的 package， 但是呢，他们默认是乌干图的，乌干图的 package。然后我们感谢我们的这个三天腿，他们打包了这种 R D M 包，然后呢，我们可以很方便的用，而且他们跟进速度非常快。然后呢，就是 f a c o n a 的一些文章也在去跟进。呃，如果大家有问题，可以去这个 GitHub 去，然后回答的还是非常快。然后 Google Google Group， 呃，然后我把一些文呃，还有他们的一些建议放在这个上。然后最后打个广告啊，我们做了一些这个 Clean House 方面的一些培训。这个还，我觉得在国内应该是比较全的一个事情，大家可以扫码了解一下。好，我就讲到这些，谢谢大家。谢谢大家有什么问题吗？两个问题。
对到刚才他们讲的时候提到那个不一致的这个问题，然后你的演讲里好像没有提到这个问题。然后我主要的问题是，他不使用 replica 的时候，他同一个 query 不同的次的跑还会出现不一致的结果。呃，你指的是在分布式表、分布式上、分布式表上跑还是在什么上跑？啊，对，就是在分布式上搞，但是不开这个 replica 的功能。啊，对。啊，没有遇到这个问题啊，我好像没有遇到这个问题。要不私下再细细聊。
为业务就是我要我要按地区查询，我要按 IP 查询，直接走这部分流程程序。嗯，那比如说定制化的报表，呃，定制化那就得写定制化的搜稿，然后把数据同步到那搜稿里，定期去加载到那搜稿。那你也不会强制一些就是时间表啊，比如说末末日时间？我们计划会用那个定化表。啊，我我。然后另外一个问题就是，您 Hangout 支持的，因为我我看了一下这个 Hangout， 它是一个单机的消耗，应该是。啊。那它有有瓶颈吗？现在比较担心这个。我们目前处理有瓶颈的是一个每秒十万的一个业务，十万秒。OK OK， 那要六。刚才我看到说是那个节点只能增加，不能减少。因为它它的数据它分量还够，比如说我十个节点变十个节点变四个节点，数据不就自动那个什么了吗？比如说十个变九个九个变八个，数据是自自动搬迁的嘛？但这地方有一个问题，比如说我现在某一台机器直接挂掉了，可能磁盘也要转坏了，就是无法恢复。嗯，这的话其实它应该是有一个机制保证我数据不丢，或者说复制表嘛。对，那如果是复制表的话，那是否我本身就是可以用这种机制实现机器的一个？它复制是一对一复制，它，比如我们刚才画了一二三四，就一一卷二二卷三三卷，一二三之间他们是不知道，他们你存到哪些数据我就知道。是杨同学的演讲讲的，对，杨同学，然后那个对你先调那个，应应该是，然后刚才是我们市场部小伙伴。那个强烈要求我们，我们还是要说一下一贯。这个简单说一下吧，因为这次也是我们和俄罗斯这边来去主办了一个 m e t a 一贯现在是，呃，我们主要做 SDK 的数据采集。现在月活在五点二个亿。呃，其实我想跟大家分享的是，一贯今年，呃，参加这个数据论这个这个活动哈。今年除了像 Clubhouse， 我们后边还会有跟 p i r i t o 的 f r e e Farm， 还会有和 Apache 的 k i l l i n g 还有和像原来这个 Spark 里的 Luxor 的一些 Luxor 的这些一些 Meetup 一系列活动，如果大家对技术这块比较感兴趣，也想参加数据这块的一些东西，大家可以来加我的微信，我的微信是郭大侠全拼，然后二九九九，然后中间我会给大家拉到这个咱们的这个 c l i c k h o u s e 群里面，后边如果这边有相关的一些活动，也可以来看我的这个微信的朋友圈。我现在自己在一关做 CTO， 所以也欢迎大家如果对数据感兴趣，来加入到一关来，所以给我们的市场部的小伙伴有一个交代。来，那后边由我们的杨总来去做这个。
，在这个音箱的一些应用，比如说这种监控，还有这个精分的，还有一些主官网的数据的采集和分析，呃，有一些这个应用平台切换到可链号。我给大家主要就是在宏观上，在架构上来讲一讲这个，呃，在这个开发行业，这个、呃、怎么样的来。把一些应用迁移到可链号上，再做在线的分析，主要是这个层面。呃，因为呃，今天也有这个可链号的这个呃官方的人讲了可链号内部的一些技术的细节给大家分享，还有这个新浪，他们也在讲他们自己在呃新浪的这个 APM 的应用的分析，也讲了很多的细节了。所以说我就不再讲很细节的东西，主要体现在这个。架构上，啊、呃，其实，呃，应该算是这个可爱号是在中国企业的这个这个应用市场里面做的，我们应该是算比较早的几家之一。呃，那么这个我单讲这个日程呢，包括这个，比如说电信、既往，既往它数据分析的场景是什么？还有这个大数据平台怎么样？这个可爱号跟卡布克之间的这个比较，我们有一个在这个方向上的一个比较，还有我们一个怎么样迁移的这个可爱号这个，呃，迁移之后的技术架构是什么样的？呃，还有是这个我们打算在这个公有云，就是 public cloud 的 cloud 提供这个可爱号的云服务，主要是在中国。啊，那首先我给大家讲一下这个既往的这个这个数据分析应用的场景。啊，其实呢，总的来讲，运营商数据算最多的，还有这个 T 的什么其他的互联网的公司的数据加一起，应该没有运营商的数据多。因为什么呢？因为所有的数据都通过运营商主管网走嘛。呃，这个运营商他从主管网会进项出一份数据，比如说每秒呃几个 G 的数据会会。会这个同步到一个大的数据池子里面，呃，一年的数据根本不用想了，它根本不可能存那么多，三三个月的数据马上就把这个数据清掉，然后再再储存几年的。呃，现在运营商也在做这个用户行为的一个特征的分析，包括所有走运营商的这个移动端或者 PC 端的这个。那么在呃最底层呢，它来来自的数据就是手机，呃无线网，对吧？然后这个很早的这个 WAP 网关，呃通过这个既往的进行端口上来之后，会有一个采集，这个采集对这个硬件的设计，主要做这个数据的这个捕获，还有这个限量的这个解析，限量的数据。用户的一些
条码已经用了好长时间了，所以说这块儿已经没有动，就是卡卡出去先那个发到这个芒果，芒果呢做这个 OBS 数据清洗，然后把通过芒果把数据到这个储存号子，不断端，然后把它这个存到这个储存号子集群，这个集群是。然后下一步的话，我们再把这个芒果的数据再同步到这个可兰果数据，啊，再转换进行之后，呃，那么我们可能下一步做两个工作，第一个就是说做一个同步工具，然后同芒果同步到可兰号子，再同通过这个 MySQL 同步到可兰号子，然后这个芒果呢。
去中心，然后让他集群来排布啊，这个他同时有时候网络不稳定断了，啊，而且还影响行业自己的处理和盘询，所以说这种方式可使的，就是说您备份呢，翻备份，还是在一个处理中心，然后就是用一个特定的几个同步工具或者同步平台来去同步，专门来同步，这个是设计。像这个 h o p h o p 的方式其实是很好的。虽然 LDFS 它文件性性能特别差，但是已经有这个网络的生态了，对吧？而且大量数据也都在这 LDFS 上面，就是再直接挂个语音直接查，因为这个东西比较方便，就是说除去这个性能问题，它毕竟比较方便。那么就是说。比如说，我建一个集群，比如说我参集点或者四节点，然后当它这里面没有状态信息的话，这些有一个节点它到了，然后这这几个区域有可能不知道，因为没有信息嘛。然后这个搭建集群的话，你必须我配置那个通过这个配置键，然后比如四排或者五排，那么你这个它就是头显，不存在说我有一个 ready 或者有一台停了，然后比如说。service 这里面有很多的东西要做，第一个就是自动化，按需使用，水平扩展的这个这个啊，包总也提到了，就是这些都是一些小重点，呃，可靠性、高可用、自动备份，就这些东西。
像徐先生那样有上百个片子啊，就是说大概是一个比较宏观性的一个介绍，因为我们始终没有刚开始接触这些。呃，我们现在也是在挑两方面的人，一方面就是说可能号的这个开发，对吧？主要面向应用的，还有一个面向是这个可能号的几个就是这个数数字内存的一个开发。如果谁要感兴趣的话，可以联系我们，然后来谈一下。谢谢大家。
这个模块中间是并不非常有存在意思的。也就是说，我们可以等于是 consume 任何的就是 machine data， 或者是你的 data log， 然后通过我们这个平台去做一些分析，数据的数据的分析。然后为什么大家可能会问问题？既然 Spark 本来已经是做一个日志搜索引擎，或者说我们有个外号叫 Google for IT 嘛，那为什么还要去跟 Datehouse 做集成嘛？因为 Datehouse 可能是在功能上跟 Spark 会有一些那个 overlap 的地方。那主要是因为嗯 Spark 的话，就我们内部来说，它可能比较擅长于处理一些机器的日志，我们会称为 machine data， 或者是一些是基于 time time scale， 就是基于时间的日志。但是的话，如果是做一些像 Datehouse 那种所擅长的那种 overlap 的 search 的话，那我们不得不承认，其实 Datehouse 的速度是非常快的。然后我们内部实际上也是很想说，就是我们 leverage Spark 这个平台，然后通过 Datehouse 这个非常强大的搜索 index 的性能，就是我们在 Spark 这端只是做一个 visualization 加上一个 analyze 的 panel。那就像前面可能那个新浪的那个大牛可能会说到说，他们可能用用 ES。就是 Elastic Search 嘛，那我们可能就是会像 Spark 平台，就像用成为一个提拔呢，加上一下一些 Advanced Feature。那我们内部可能有句话是说 ，Talk is cheap, show me the demo。就如果我在讲一些架构啊什么的，可能也不如在座各位这些大牛。那我直接就秀一个 demo 嘛，就是我们目前所尝试的，我们可能是在一个比较初始的阶段，尝试是用 Spark 去和 Datehouse 做集成。这个就是我们 Splunk 的界面，然后我们现在做的实际上相当于是一个 Splunk 的 Connector for Clickhouse。你可以看到，就是这个的话被我们内部称为叫 SPL。SPL 的话，你可以理解为就是一个 Splunk 的 Circuit。然后它的这个命令，我们就是 Cry 命令的话，是我们自己等于是基于 Splunk 平台的 Dios 开发的。如果你之前用过 Splunk 平台的话，就知道就是这个命令源它是不支持的。然后这个 query 的话，相当于就是一个很简单的 s o c i a l query。然后这个 connect 的话，是之前我已经预先配置好的一个 data house 的那个一个连接的一些配置。那因为这次我想在这里做个 demo， 然后就担心有网络问题嘛，因为我们之前可能有其他的机器是部署在云端或者部署在其他的那个 VM 里面的，所以这次我 demo 的那个机器的话，是目前的话是一个 data house 的那个 Docker image。然后它里面存放了大概是四到五个 G B 的那个比较著名的那个纽约出租车的数据，可能之前我记得那个罗斯大牛他在幕的时候也提到过那个纽约出租车的数据。对，然后这个就是我们简单的是通过 Splunk 这端做一个 search， 然后嗯，你可以看到，如果你稍微有一点，就是我们 Splunk 正常来说的话，它是会 search 在我们内部 index 的，哦，我们把放大一点。这样可以可以看到吗？对，如果是正常的 Splunk 的一个 events 的话，我们是会把它数据是 index 在 Splunk 内部，也就是在这个 events 这个 panel 里面看到它的 raw data。但实际上在这边你是看到它显示是没有任何数据，就是因为我们这次的话是完全利用了 Trace House 的那个 index 及 search 的功能，在 Splunk 这端我们只是通过一个 query 去拿回它 return 的一个结果，就是这样的一个 statistics。就是这样一个，然后如果你想看那个 raw data 的话，我这边有一个 demo， 我把它稍微改一下。对，这一块的话就是说，如果我要把那个 click house 的数据 index 到 Splunk 里面去，就是一些 raw data。那当然，我只可能因为那个表非常大，我只 index 了前一万条。然后你可以看到，在这个 demo 里面，我我所我就是整个 aggregation 的操作也是通过那个 clear house 去做的。你可以看到这个数据的话，相当于是它是根据不同的，应该是出租车公司的那个有可能有三个不同的 vendor， 然后这个 vendor 它统计的一个总共的乘客数量。然后我们可以做个比比较，就是。这个的话就是，如果我们用 Splunk 去，等于是只是用 Clean House Index， 然后在 Splunk 这端去做 search。当然，因为如果我把整个四四个 G 的 G P 一次性写进来的话，可能非常慢，所以我可以 limit 到一万条。我可以把后面这个操作先删掉。你可以
看到，这就是呃 ，suppose 应该是传过来的那些放在 DP 里面的 raw data。然后这一块呢，实际上我们的架构上来说，并不是非常复杂的，就是这是我们 Splunk， 然后我们 Splunk 是提供的一套，就是有有 Python、有 Java 以及各种代码的 SDK， 然后通过这个 SDK， 相当于它会 dispatch， 它会是起一个新的 Java 的 process， 然后这个 process 呢，它会去拿到一些，就是我刚才设置的一些，比如来像那些块的信息，以及那个我我数据的一些值的信息，然后通过 Base House 提供的那个 DDBC 的 Driver。它整个把数据给 fetch 过来 ，fetch 完之后，再把这个数据通过 REST API 再写回到 Splunk。然后这就是刚刚那个我们被称为，你可以把它理解为就是 Splunk 的 s i l k 的一个详细解释嘛，就这么一个 c r i m e 命令。然后这个相当于是我自己写的一个小程序，或者是我们自己 customize 的一个 command。然后这个是 query string。然后这个是因为我们 Splunk 内部的话，都是通过这样的一个 config file 是把那个，嗯，可能就是我起名叫 ch lab 的这个。嗯 ，base house 的那个连接的配置信息写在了这里，就是通过这样一个步骤的话，就实现了就是在 Splunk 端直接 consume 你 click house 的 data， 而且我们在 Splunk 端是肯定是不用 index 任何数据。对，如果大家是可能对 Splunk 不熟悉，有什么问题的话可以随时打断我。那然后第二块的话。既然我们已经把数据，我们所谓 get data in 就是把数据 in c o d e 进来，那第二块我相当于就在做做前头想说做一个落地，或者说把它做做成一个 visualization。那我会 demo 两块的 visualization。嗯，如果是最简单的，对那些可能是 normal 用户来说的话，他可能会直接选择这个 visualization panel， 但是呃，我会选换一个 bar chart 或者 line chart。可能这个数据现在显示的不是特别好。那我还是直接先看我们自己定义过的那个，就是基于 Splunk 的前端的 framework， 自己相当于是基于前面那些 query data， 然后我们把这个表做了一个相当于自己的 visualization。那这张表的话，我们实际上是会统计，就是每一天。那个，因为这是一个有位出租车的那张表嘛，那个表里面实际上它不是会告诉我们一些，就是有位出租车，然后它在某一天，然后具体某一个时段内，有有多少乘客乘了他们的出租车，然后乘出租车的乘客他花了多少钱及他们的距离。然后在这边的话，我是可以选择一个时间段，选完时间段之后，下面它是一个相当于是一个 heat map。它会相当于是，你看看看上有个 legend， 这个 legend 的秀的是说，就是根据你可以看到，这个是我们用到的那个 SQL query， 当然这个 query 所有的就是 index 和 element 的数据都是在 base house 里边，我们就是通过前面你可以看到那个命令拿过来的，它的相当于 return 的 result， 然后它通过这个 result 的话，你可以看到就是生成了一个那个一个相当于是 heat map 的 chart， 它会显示出就是在哪个时段里。呃，我这个选的是那个 trip， 就是在哪个这个、这个时段里面，哪个时段里面就是可能是乘出租车人特别多，这边的话可能从早上七点钟开始，我把可能把这个缩小一点，对，到到大概晚上的九八点九点十点是人特别多的，然后可能凌晨的时间绿色的就是属于因为它比较稀疏，就是人比较少。然后的话，你可以看到这边是我们用到的那个 circle query， 当然也是是。得益于那个 Click House， 它搜索性能非常强大吧，所以实际上这个获得这个结果数据非常快。我可以把这个 Query 拈过来，然后你们看一下，就是这么一个 Query。然后相当于我们 Splunk 这边就得到了你通过这个 Query 拿到了所有的数据。然后的话，可能有人想知道是说，如果我想自己开发这么一个 app， 会不会会特别复杂？然后会不会就是比较难以学学习之类？然后你可以看到，这是我我们这个 app 的，就是我这是这次 demo 做的这个 app 的它的整个 photo structure。然后这个并目录下就是我自己刚刚就是基于我们 Splunk 平台，然后实现了一个相当于 Splunk 的 connect for click house， 在并目录下是一些 backend 的代码。
。啊，那么现在目前是一些 Python 代码，它用来是连接，然后让它变成 Git Driver， 然后最后是拿它 return 的数据。然后这边的话就是一个 page 的是我们自己，相当于是通过 web pack 打好的一个 mobile 的一个 JS 的包。因为我目前里面实现的话就很简单，就是引用了一个第三方的第三点 JS 的库，然后它库里面它的数据完全是通过我前面给你们 demo 的那个 query string， 然后所塞回到那个那个 chat 里面去的。所以在整个过程中的话，我们通过 c l i c k h o u s e 然后通过 s t u n t 呃，就可以非常简单的你实现一套自己。来定义一套 visualization， 因为前面我记得有个同事好像有提到过，是说不是那个应该是新浪的提到过，是说他们用 super set， 因为 super set 的话，我不知道他如果要自己开发第三方的 app 的话，会不会会相对来说比较复杂一点，是吧？因为我们这边实际上有已经有提供一套 overall 的 JS 的 framework 给你们看一下，是，也是第三是吧？我们是可以自己定义，不一定需要用第三，你可以用任何 chat library。就是，然后就相当于你自己写了个 Web 的小应用，然后应用里面只是调了一些 search 的结果。我不确定你是应该可以吧？就就是这就是我们目前来说我们的 t e n s i b l e 的 framework 的架构。然后你们看到这两层就是 Spark 和它的 REST API， 然后这套呢是 Backend 的 SDK， 这套 SDK 就是我前面用来 extend 的是说实现了我们那个 Spark Connect for c l i c k h o u s e 那一块，主要应用的现在一个是 Java 的，一个是 Python SDK。然后前端的话就是我们用来 build 一个 visualization， build 你的 Splunk app。然后这块的话主要是用了我们这个 JavaScript 以及一些第三方 open 的代码的库。然后相当于是通过这些那个 platform 来 build 我们一套等于是分析大数据的那个 app。那当然还有第三块，因为第三块的话是说你既然能获得数据，然后也能获得。visualization 之后，势必是很多人想说，我能不能对它进行一些 analyze？ 说 analyze， 我们知道还有很多的需求是说，我们对它进行 monitor， 或者还要要发一些告警的操作之类的。那其实只要是你能把数据写回到 Splunk， 并且拥有了数据的话，这些功能都是可以通过 Splunk 的一些 feature 来实现的。因为我知道也有也有些可能大牛会用 Kibana， 但 Kibana 的话，它可能一些 alert 或者一些 advanced 的功能的话，你肯定是需要收费功能的。然后在 Spark 端的话，你可以看到我，比如说我会把某一个数据，我，就比如说我这个数据是用来监控，是说在这个时间段内有多少乘客乘坐，就是呃有就不同的公司有多少的那个乘客，然后我完全可以说，你每一个小时我会把它 save 成一个，我们被它称为一个 alert。a l e r t of support 就是说，它可以定一个，就是我随便写名字吧。然后你可以完全可以选择是它 run 是每个小时的多少时候，它会跑一下这个 search。然后这个 search 的话，就是在 click house 上做，做完之后，我会有一个 trigger 的 condition， 也就是说，它当满足什么条件之后，比如我可以说，如果乘客的数量大于一千在一个小时内，它就给我发一个告警，我就会在下面有一个这样的一个。可以 send 一个 email 告诉我，然后这样就实现了。其实你数据从获得数据，然后可视化，最后也能对数据进行监控。那当然的话，对我们来说，可能那个这只只是一个开始嘛，因为我们其实 Splunk 是非常想 leverage 那个 Clickhouse 非常强大的 o l a p s 的去功能。然后甚至想可能会在上面做一些那种 PI 的集成，因为可能很多人可能会使用过 Tableau， 应该在场很多人使用过 Tableau 吧？就 Tableau 这边它 support 也是，如果我把数据导入之后，它 support 它那个 PI 的那个 UI 是非常酷炫的。这样我们也是非常希望，就是既然你 c l i c k h o u s e 有这么强大的 o l a p 的搜索功能，我完全可以在 s p a r k 端借用我们那套 JS 的 UI 的 framework 去开发一套我们自己的那个 PI 的套件库，这样。就是在座各位，可能你只需要通过简单的拖拽，就能获得自己想要的 visualization 了。然后另外一块的话，是我们所谓的 modular input integration。所谓的 modular input integration， 也就是说，因为刚才的话，所有的数据都是存在 Clickhouse 端。嗯，当然可能也有客户想说，我想把一些简单的 aggregation 的数据，给能不能写入到 Splunk？ 那这也是可以的，就是我们会有一个相当于也是一个后台的 process。
它可以说是定时的会把一些，就是我刚才那个块的数据，你可以看到，我也可以让它去写到 Splunk 内部去。对，然后你就可以定时的去拿，因为。呃，怎么来说？我如果是通过 K House 那边去拿的话，通过 JDB Driver 还是有些 latency 的。但如果你能把一些 aggregation 好的简单的数据存到 Splunk 端的话，这样你可能 search 会更快。对，那下面这块实际上也是我们未来想开拓的，就是中国人就是 low cost solution 嘛。因为知道在座各位都是一些资深的 DBA 之类的，那我们也非常想了解，就是在座的各位 DBA 可能会你们有强大的那种嗯 database， 然后可能也有非常强大的。社区啊，或者是其他的 engine， 然后你们如果是想基于这些方面做一些自己的 visualization 或者 monitor 的话，会有怎么样的需求？那因因为时间有限，所以我今天就把那个 demo 时间缩短。然后如果各位有问题的话，就下面就是科研环节。还有什么问题吗？不是吧？问题吗？暂时没有哈、啊，大家等到现在都是真爱了。这个，啊，那那个后边就让咱们的呃那个 Alex 也去给大家介绍一下，呃，也那个 Clickhouse 即将发布的我们的一些 update。呃 ，Alex， 这这这啥？这啥？这啥 ？OK。对，我反正早上我们在听的时候已经。比较振奋的是要发布 updates， 还能 delete， 是吧 ？Right，Right。Finally, the last presentation for today, and then you can go for <laughs> new features and development roadmap. Uh, first part, what we have done, and we are happy about that we have done it. And uh, I think the most important is custom partition key. Uh, recently, we had only partition by month. It's difficult to explain why exactly month. Why not days? Why not years? But it was just month. And then what's some difficult is when you uh, want to do manipulations with partitions. For example, uh, just uh, drop all the data or move data from one server to another. But now we have the possibility to define any kind of partition by any expression. For example, partition by week or by date. And also we introduce a new syntax for creating uh, tables and specifying parameters for tables. Uh, you just define your primary key in order by close, and that's natural, because data will be ordered by primary key. Okay, next. Uh, we added new functions uh, to deal uh, with coordinates, geographical coordinates. It's not secret that it is intended for advertising, to show you some uh, to target you some advertisement when you walk around your favorite uh, store, for example. Uh, one interesting function is point in polygon. You define an area, polygonal area on the map, 
and just select it. Uh, for example, your users who was in that area. Uh, next, uh, quite experimental feature is integration with machine learning uh, tool, CatBoost. By the way, CatBoost is an uh, example of another open source uh, product <coughs> from Yandex. First was Rickhouse, another uh, CatBoost. CatBoost is much like XGBoost, if you know, but uh, it has uh, more quality. In Rickhouse, it's pretty, uh, pretty simple. You just define your models in the integration file, and then it became available as model evaluate function. Another point is extended support for uh, working with date and time intervals. You can write your query as in standard SQL. Uh, date plus interval, and then any kind of interval, month, uh, year, uh, days, and so on. Also, we have uh, added support for time zones with fractional offset from UTC. By the way, you are from China, so you are happy because you have time zone with uh, UTC plus eight. 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 Okay. Uh, but, uh, for example, people from India are much less happy than you. They have plus five and 30 minutes. And recently, uh, we had no support for such, uh, such strange time zones. Now we have. By the way, in, uh, for example, in Nepal, do you know the country Nepal? Uh, there is uh, 45 minutes, even more challenging. Also extended uh, support of time range to one century more than we had. And uh, added some um, functions like time diff to calculate differences in any kind of interval. For example, proper uh, difference between time points in number of months. Another improvement in support of time zones is a uh, proper implementation of uh, tracking time zones in data types. For example, uh, recently you have such query, you have time point and convert it to round it to start of an hour in specific time zone. It uh, should not modify an hour. Uh, it was 1 a.m. And uh, in result, it also uh, will have 1 a.m. But recently, this uh, query returned not, uh, not natural, not intuitive result. Do you know what was happening? It was uh, returning different hours, but uh, it, this behavior was uh, quite correct, and we uh, could explain it. Uh, because time zone is converted to start of hour in specific time zone, and then it displayed in local time zone, formatted as text, in local time zone, in different time zone. Uh, now we add the support to track time zone in day, time data type. So if you have a time in uh, Beijing or Shanghai, it's all the same, the day, time data type will uh, track that it was Shanghai. And the date will be displayed correctly. Okay, next uh, feature, I think quite important, distributed uh, data definition language queries. 
You can create table, drop uh, table, alter table, not on single local node, but on the whole cluster. Then this will work even if some part of the cluster is unavailable right now, because it will be saved in Jupyter and processed asynchronously. So you just do a query, create table, and the table will be created. There are a few limitations. I will not uh, read this. Next is support for multi-dimensional arrays, but specifically for storing multi-dimensional arrays in tables. Recently, uh, we, uh, you could have multi-dimensional arrays, but only as temporary objects. You, uh, there was not possible to store them in tables. Now it is possible. It will work. And also we added uh, some useful functions to deal with arrays. Arrays, concatenation, adding values uh, to arrays, removing values. Maybe it should be considered as a shame that we have added these functions only recently. We always uh, have demand for this. Uh, another interesting possibility is introspection of dictionary. As you have heard in previous presentations, dictionaries is maybe one of the most important features of Greek house. And uh, recently there was not no possibility to just look at the dictionary directly. Now you can create magical database with dictionary engine. Just create a database engine equals dictionary. And all your dictionaries will be available in that database as a separate table. And you can, can just select the data directly from dictionary. And also you have the possibility to reload dictionary by uh, running a query uh, or specifying a query to be run on remote source uh, to know when the dictionary should be updated. For example, you can uh, have special table with update time in remote source and just query that update time. We have added support for sessions in HTTP interface. Sessions are needed to create temporary tables uh, or, for example, use database or change uh, <coughs> some settings. You just specify session identifier, the session will be created, and then this session is available if you do a query with the same identifier. Next part is what we have done, but not quite, because even more uh, work is still to do. Uh, first, this is already available in the latest uh, release. And I think it will be quite important feature is uh, to create foreign tables from remote database. For example, you have a MySQL uh, server and then you can run a query in ClickHouse that will directly fetch uh, the data from uh, your MySQL. By the way, it's quite quite strange, quite counterintuitive, but when you do uh, group by in uh, uh, grid house, when and read uh, data from MySQL, it is much faster than to uh, group by locally in MySQL server. 
because uh, click house just uh, do group by special. Even uh, this is that it will uh, fetch data from the network, from MySQL transfer to click house and only then uh, do aggregation. But it is still much faster. Maybe we should consider to also add support for Monaco. Maybe. Please raise your hand if you really need it. Yeah. Just one, one person. Maybe you can consider uh, Redis. Redis. Uh, probably. Uh, so just, just, just a bit of translation here. Recently, I was just uh, removed about 5,000 offices. 
lines of code from our code base related to implementation of now. And as surprise, uh, we, the bugs are mostly gone. Uh, and in uh, the latest uh, version of Treehouse, in the latest release, support for now uh, now pretty stable. By the way, how many of you uh, use nouns in ClickHouse? Oh, you use it to kind of mean nouns a lot. <laughs> Just one, one person, right? <laughs> uh, the next part is what is almost done, but still not available. What will be done maybe in nearest even week? when we fly to Moscow and finish our code, and it will be done. <laughs> Distributed class, uh, cluster to cluster copying tool. Uh, this is very useful if you uh, need to do resharding, to change cluster configuration. For example, to add more servers to the cluster, or migrate from small cluster to big, or even in opposite direction, uh, you will use just uh, cluster copy. It will be false tolerant. So you have, uh, suppose you have a cluster with few petabytes of data. You just run cluster copy, go to sleep, then go to sleep again, uh, and after maybe a week or uh, so on, it will be done. Uh, this is main intent for distributed fault tolerant cluster copy. Uh, next, maybe it's not so important, but it should be considered maybe even as a bug. Uh, recently, when you uh, use a subquery in in section of your query, and you had uh, a column from primary key on the left, the index was not used. It will just scan a table and filter by the set. But uh, in next uh, versions it will just use index as it should use. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask how many of you really need this. Using O direct mode to read and write data during long background merges. For reading and writing data during long background merges. For example, you have a merge that lasts for a few hours. And if you uh, read data without all the diet, it will just uh, flush your page cache. It will flush your page cache, and page cache is very important for uh, hot quick queries or hot data. Maybe you don't need this, but I will raise my hand because I need this. And I will do it. Uh, next uh, part is what we will do, but not right now. A bit later, uh, in a few months, or maybe this year. For example, for better integration with Hadoop infrastructure, HDFS, we should add support for uh, parquet file formats to import and export data. And it will be also useful to support protobuf. I would like to ask you, do you need this? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, another point is uh, to proper support for complex default expressions in 
semi structured formats like JSON in Pro. For example, you have a file with JSON. Uh, and in some rows, you have all columns. In some rows, some columns are missing. And you want to define an expression to calculate these missing columns from another column using some complex expression. Currently, it uh, cannot use it. You specify columns in insert, and all other columns uh, will be statically calculated. Few points again. Uh, predicate push push down into subquery. For example, you you have an query for view and put it, it into subquery and specify where close uh, that use uh, primary key. The primary key currently will not be used because predicate is not pushed down into subquery. Uh, so you should write all uh, important wire conditions directly into subquery, in inner subquery. Another point are type conversions for union all. Uh, now there is no type conversion. Even if you write select one, union all select minus one. It will say that one and minus one are different types. Unsigned integer eight and integer eight. I think that's stupid. We should fix it. And support for, we should implement support for subqueries in views. Another uh, quite unnatural a ridiculous thing that we have is uh, evaluation uh, of expression that we do. We have no lazy evaluation, no short circuit evaluation. May I ask you a question? What this query will return? Yeah. It uh, we'll say uh, division by zero. But we will write this uh, condition operator directly, specifically for the purpose to get rid of this error. But it will evaluate both sides of expression and uh, throw an error. Uh, it much like if Maybe if uh, this expression is related on GPU, but it's not on GPU. But we still uh, have lack of short uh, circuit evaluation. Definitely we should fix it. Another point is group support for group and sets, like with roll up, with few for group by. Uh, again, may I ask a question? Who needs this? Uh, is this very useful just for a single person <laughs> in this room? <laughs> no, no problem. We will do it in our way. Uh, and uh, currently, uh, we have uh, taken no advantage of using primary key for order by primary key. Uh, but uh, data in the house is uh, stored in an order almost sorted by primary key. Actually, in a number of data parts, each of uh, data parts is sorted. So if you, if, uh, you write in a select order by primary key, uh, limit 10. Why it should read all the tables? It should read just uh, beginning of each part. Right? Another quite important feature.
feature is so allow specify custom con compression algorithms for each code. Currently, we have LD4 by default. You can enable ZSD, but uh, it is uh, for all um, code. But maybe you should have the possibility to apply delta compression, delta encoding for some code, and only then compress by LD4. Uh, we want to uh, give you this possibility. Another quite difficult, uh, quite complicated feature, but I think it will be very useful. Secondary index data structures for data schema. Now we have just one index, primary key. But what if uh, for each block of data in data path, you can write some information uh, like minimum and maximum such code. Or maybe all uh, distinct values of a column is if it has uh, not large uh, amount of distinct values. And then we can just uh, skip more data while reading. And uh, another feature we want to add sooner or later is uh, to allow to configure different data volume. For example, so, uh, consider you have a server with large HDD uh, shelf and also have a few SSD. Uh, and uh, we want to allow you to configure uh, quick house so it will store fresh data on SSD and move all data on your HDD array while merging. Uh, yeah, so you uh, usually attach 
is our storage as network attached storage, right? Uh, it can be cheaper, but it will be not usually, uh, it will be much less efficient because uh, your storage will be limited by uh, link layer, network link between the storage and uh, your uh, computation. Okay, next uh, is improvement for external dictionaries to allow you to create external dictionaries not by XML files, but directly through the query. Create dictionary and so on. Another uh, very uh, small feature, but difficult to implement. Uh, currently, uh, if you do an aggregation without group by uh, from empty uh, data sets, for example, select count from table where something doesn't exist. It will return nothing. In uh, usual databases, it will return zero. One row with count equal to zero. Uh, so we have uh, incompatibility with F files and we should get rid of this incompatibility. And the uh, next point about managing of user access rights. Uh, now you have to define your users in XML file. What if you have thousands, at least thousands of users or maybe more than a billion of users as you are from China, maybe you have billion of users of your your house database. It's a joke. <laughs> it will be better to just integrate uh, with uh, user directory from LDAP, for example. And finally, Support for update and delete. Wonderful. <laughs> 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 no comments. Let's talk about the another uh, thing. Uh, next thing is uh, resource pools for proper sharing of computational resources. Uh, suppose you have a cluster and you have many users. Uh, some users are more important, some are less. For example, there can be your internal analysts and uh, there can be interactive queries uh, that should be served without uh, delays by inter interference of another queries. So uh, we will add the possibility to define uh, resource pools for CPU, uh, memory, uh, disk, IOPS, and network bandwidth. And uh, you will have the possibility to define that resource pool, pools named analysts can use just 50% uh, of CPU. If the cluster is overloaded, if the cluster is not loaded, analysts uh, will be able to use the whole cluster. But when it is loaded, the sharing of resources should be controlled. Uh, next very important feature, I don't want to talk about it too much, improvement of joint syntax.
currently most are not, and this task is to introduce uh, queries scheduling. Uh, currently, we have very limited possibilities. For example, we have priority setting, but uh, priority setting is very primitive. You can uh, define a lower priority for some queries, and when query with higher priority is run, all lower priority queries just uh, stop it for a while, completely. And I think final point is cloud tables. It's uh, quite difficult to explain what it is, but we want to allow you to ingest data to ClickHouse and don't care too much about uh, cluster schema. Uh, now you, you have uh, to split your cluster carefully to shards and replicas to decide what number of shards and replicas you should have. But we want to introduce specific uh, type of tables that will automatically decide how to shard data. For example, as you uh, have uh, in some other uh, databases like Cassandra, it's not so easy to implement because when you define the cluster schema manually, you have more con control over this. Now this is done explicitly and it is better understandable. But sometimes uh, we need just to, uh, to do some uh, either more convenient uh, solution for the user. And that's it. So, if you have any questions about what map, even if you uh, have some plans that you would like to implement by yourself. <laughs> If you like to become ClickHouse committer, ClickHouse developer, just, uh, yeah. I want to confirm one thing that uh, much value will be supported in the next version, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the multi value dimension? dimension. Multi yeah, actually, it's already supported in version uh, 5, uh, 4, 3, 4, 2 in the latest version. You uh, can see it in change log. It will be supported right, right now. Uh, 37 is previous version. We already have a patch uh, for bug fixes. It is 42 version. And probably a few days we will have next release. So the so you talk is a yes, right? Yeah. And it's not supported yet. Multidimensional arrays are already supported in the latest release. We have latest release just a few days ago. Okay. If you install it, you can freely use multidimensional arrays. Uh, I can go by that uh, dimension, yeah. So? I can go by that uh, much better dimension in my Yeah, system. you can uh, group by, by arrays of any dimension. Okay, thank you. Then some questions or,我想问一下，就是那个我们在升级前用使用的是老版本的Clickhouse，然后那个Clickhouse在升级排列前的时候，只能用月嘛，没有months。然后现在就是我们现在升级新版本的那个Clickhouse，然后这个升级的过程
刚才说的兼容性问题啊，就是包包全开的包之类的。Compatibility is always maintained between versions. The only risk if you will update then use the new feature and then by any reason decide to downgrade. So a new tables will just not support it and server will server will refuse to start. And the golden rule is to always have your test environment. You should uh, even when you say that you have stable recurse release, you should not trust us by 100%. You should always test in your use cases, in your infrastructure. Maybe there will be some issues, but not with compatibility. Compatibility is always maintained. So the new version of the server always understands Oh,对的。需要翻译吗？那个第一是你upgrade它会有什么问题的问题，第二是你不要因为用一个新的版本，然后你就downgrade下去，这个时候会有一些问题。然后他说多帧数就是黄金法则，是一定现在测试环境先
Well, it is available. 它这个透露有点像那个传输部分一样，就是如果你限制百分之五十，如果它那边是有空闲的，它会把那个都先吃满。然后它说和你说限制的那个 per share 也不是一件事儿，啊，基本上，我他说到第二季度才能发布出来，所以具体的到时候再看。His question is about uh, uh, would the, uh, some guys met, uh, met an uh, error when they uh, batch load the file to the click house, batch load to the click house. And he's, he think uh, that that error is caused by the separate uh, character, 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 special character. So, so uh, he think is there any way to uh, to to what 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 You better change it to semicolon. It's not possible right now, but it's a good future request. Can I have it? There is a copy here. Okay. Ah, I want to ask you, is it possible that they have a copy of the Kafka version in the future? Because now, Disney Channel is okay to make it, but its TSV, which is the Dictionary of Functions, is more popular than the Dictionary of Functions. But it is more popular than the Dictionary of Functions. 所有的卡夫卡消息是一条记录，如果不是以杠杆结尾的话是不可以的。对，呃 ，this question is could you support me？ 应该不是说卡夫卡的升级吧，而是说那个是卡夫卡。他问那个引擎是否会这么升级？呃、uh, ，your engine will your engine be upgraded for the latest Kafka engine, right? Because now the Kafka engine is it, it can be uh. The data is just like a pay, 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 tab, 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 tab character. And now uh, he just uses the click house to use to connect to to uh, to Kafka. Then there will be one record. There is a lot of tab character. So actually, in Kafka, there is a several uh, uh, several records because the newest Kafka use a tab to to, to separate the record. Uh, so for this case, we have to add support for some specific format of data, as you have in Kafka, right? Uh, yes, you you should like Kafka. Yes, his 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 data is in Kafka, and the, the new version of Kafka. Okay. By the way, uh, you can ask. My uh, maintainer of uh, Kafka support in Treehouse, he is Marek. Marek from Cloudflare. Uh, you can just ask him in our Telegram chat. And uh, I will invite him to answer your question. <laughs> Yeah. Not the Kafka version. The, the engine. Yeah. The Kafka yeah. engine. Yeah. Uh, he, he wants to know whether we will support more uh, in, with the Kafka engine, such as uh, we can auto uh, separate the message from Kafka into different uh, versions. Different versions? Uh, uh, different columns. Column. When you use Kafka engine, uh, you specify uh, a format, how to read messages from Kafka. Currently, uh, 
the best supported format is cap and proper. Uh, Yeah, that's all.